Good morning, folks, and welcome to another edition of the Roger Report, the best show on social media. If you are new to the channel, go ahead and take the time out to hit that like button because this is where you're going to find the best content on social media. And you're going to have me here to make sure of that so you don't even have to worry about it. And if you're already familiar with the channel, then go ahead and hit that like button because you already know what time it is and you know that this is where you're going to get the best content on social media. It is beyond a shadow of a doubt at this point. Okay? You may have seen other people do it. You may have seen other people do it well, but they don't do it quite the way I do it. So let's just keep it real. Okay? And whether you're new to the channel or you just showed up, well, or you've been coming here for a while, make sure you like this. I mean, make sure you share this content out with people. It's just a small thing you can do to help the world be a better place. And isn't that what we all want at the end of the day? Don't we want the world to be a better place? Okay. So make sure you share it through your social media, share it through word of mouth, or even text someone's phone. But do what you got to do to help spread the word. All right. Now, today, um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what does it look like to, oh, what does holding women accountable look like? Because that is something that, uh, especially us as black folks, we struggle with a great deal. Okay, so we're going to get into what does holding women accountable look like. Now, I want to say quickly today, the sponsor of today's stream will be Amazi. Uh, Amazi is a sponsor of today's stream. I want to say thank you very much for the financial support. Anyone who financially supports the channel is helping a great deal. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And my financial supporters are just like a uh, television shows commercial. Th these are the people that help make it happen. OK, so shout out to Amazi. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you, my brother. And uh, shout out to I'm listening. First one in the building today. What's going on? I'm listening. How you doing, my brother? Glad to see you here. Also glad to see A.L. Evans in the building. And he's with he has the most important phrase in all of social media right there for everybody to see. Long live the habitual line steppers. Yay, yay. <laughs> What's going on, AL? Glad to see you here, my brother. Glad to see you here. Shout out to Juan G's in the building as well. And shout out to Cool Gamer in the building. Glad to see y'all here. Glad to see y'all here. Um, now, today I want to, uh, like I said, talk a little bit about what does holding women accountable look like? And this is an important subject, and it's very important to the black community like no other, because we really don't have a good idea okay when it comes to holding women accountable most of us don't okay we 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 believe we do or we attempt to but we really don't okay now if a woman's caught doing a crime can she be tried you know can she be prosecuted and can she be convicted and get a sentence yeah, that can happen. It, and it does happen. But even when it comes down to women who are caught doing crimes, tried and convicted, for some reason, out, you know what I'm saying, but, and it doesn't look like there's any other reason other than the fact that they are a woman, they don't get sentenced like men get sentenced. All right? And that's partly because and, and it's probably mainly because when it comes to our society, we act like women can't do no wrong. And we act like when women do something wrong and we catch them red handed, that somehow it's got to be some man's fault. It's, this is a notion that people pretty much have across the board, that when a woman does something wrong, somehow it's some man's fault. Now, the truth is, it's not a man's fault. All right. Women do what they want to do because they want to do it. All right. When you live in a society, especially in a society like America, and shout out to all the people who listen from outside of America. I definitely appreciate all you all as well. Now, when you live in a society like America, you can pretty much do what you want. And people can choose to even commit crimes if they want to do that. But if someone commits a crime, why do we look at it 
as if if it's a man, a man committed a crime for himself. But then if a woman commits a crime, she did it because of some man. That's generally how we look at things. You know, something put her in a position where she just, you know, she just couldn't handle it. And some guy forced her into doing something. Okay. Uh, now, and shout out to JT Devereaux. <laughs> I see you, my brother. I see you. He says, uh, there's no such thing in holding women accountable, my opinion. You know, but <laughs> of course, that's some sarcasm. But generally, that's how it goes. We have this belief system that somehow women, as Mr. Z would say, have this higher moral ground. I don't know where it comes from, honestly. I really don't know. <laughs> uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, my guesstimation would would be that when women were weren't really working outside the home, and uh, you know when something happened, it was more likely a man did it because women were pretty much staying at home, um, at least for the most part. You know, of course, they went out grocery shopped and things like that, but women pretty much worked at home. So if a crime was committed, more than likely it would be committed by a man who was out and about more into the world. You know, that's the best guess I, I can come from of where that thought process came from that, you know, women are somehow more virtuous or more moral than men are, that they have more integrity than men. You know, and as I think about it, even when you had the story of Adam and Eve, God told Adam what to do. Adam told Eve what to do. Now, they were able to eat of any fruit in the garden. But what did Eve end up doing? Eve listened to a serpent. And the serpent convinced her that eating of the, the tree that she was told not to eat from would be a good idea. So she went into rebellion against what she was told to do. Now, Adam was there. Now, Adam wasn't deceived, but Eve was deceived. She was deceived. I give her that. She was deceived. The Bible clearly says she was deceived. But even though she was deceived, she still did something that she knew she wasn't supposed to do. So whether she believed what the serpent said or not, she already knew it was mandated not to do that thing, which was eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. This is first man, first woman. Now, morally, she knew what to do. But what did she do? She chose the immoral route. Who made her choose the immoral route? It wasn't Adam. Adam didn't, didn't have, a, have a thought process to eat from that tree. He was told not to do it, and he told her not to do it. So he was, he was cool on the tree. But the serpent convinced Eve that it would be a good idea for her, you know, if she wants to be like a god, to see the things that God sees, you know, go ahead and bite from this apple. Well, I can't say apple. We don't really know what the fruit was, but she bit from the fruit. All right. She was deceived, but it did doesn't make a difference because she was already told not to do it. OK, so really, what was she deceived at? She was deceived at why she was told not to eat the apple. OK, that's what she was deceived at. She was told, well, she had an idea of why not to eat the apple, but the serpent convinced her of a different reason of not to eat the apple. As if something was being hidden from her and she did it anyway. Now, Adam did not make her do it. All right. Adam just didn't make her do it. There's no one who can say or give any information that lends to Adam made her eat from that fruit. Now, what Adam did do was he did eat from the same fruit after Eve. And I, I my personal belief is he did that to somewhat attempt to protect Eve because he understood things that Eve did not. He saw God create things. Eve never saw God actually create anything. 
So I think he really was trying to protect her. Um, th there's a theory that because Adam was trying to be protective of her, he basically ate from the fruit too. So to put God in a position that whatever you do to Eve, you got to do the same thing to me. So he was trying to be an honorable person. That's the theory I do actually believe, at least at this point. And to, until there's a better theory out there, that's the theory I go with. He was trying to be honorable and save her. Okay. Now he could have saved her a different way, probably, but that's what that was the best he can come up with at the time. All right. Now, Eve was a woman, and it was her doing her thing that made her eat from that fruit. So does that mean women are more moral than men? I think that's a clear case to show that, no, the answer is absolutely not. Now, somebody can argue that, you know, they're just as moral as men. And you can buy into that if you want to. I wouldn't buy into that and, and with the world I see today. Because as I've said before, what do women do constantly? Okay. They're constantly lying. And a, a lot of us, we don't even pay attention to the fact that women lie to us on a regular basis. They especially you talking about a black man they're gonna lie to you and they got they're gonna lie on you <laughs> you know that's what black women do when it comes to black men they lie to us and they lie on us they make up all kinds of stories about the stuff that we did and they definitely tell us all types of lies now again i i've used an example that i'm sure a lot of men have experienced you say you you're gonna go out and get grab something to eat you ask a woman what she wants and this is your woman Y'all know each other. Y'all kicking it. This is your woman. What you want to eat, baby? Oh, I'm, I am i don't want nothing. I'm fine. Okay, cool. So you go grab yourself something to eat. Okay. And when you get back, now she's trying to eat up all your food. Now, did she know she was hungry when you asked the question? Yes, yeah, she knew she was hungry. So what made her tell the lie that she didn't want nothing to eat? Okay, you, we can come up with all types of theories of why she told that lie, why she didn't want anything to eat. But the truth is, she simply lied to you for the sake of lying. Now, I've said that when it comes to lying, there's two main reasons why someone would lie. It's mainly to deceive or there are lies of convenience. To, you know, if you wanted to deceive somebody, okay, yes, you trying to get away with something. Okay, it is what it is. You're trying to get away with something. All right. Now, you know, you could have slept with a woman, but you was in a relationship and you lie to your woman about the fact that you're faithful. That's you trying to get away with something at the end of the day. Now, there's a lot of convenience where, you know, a woman may say, well, did you put those clothes in the dryer? And you don't want to have an argument on a phone call. Now she may be she may be out and about, you know, and she calls to the she calls you who are at home and she asks, Did you put the clothes in the dryer? And you just say, Yeah, I'll put them in the dryer. You didn't put them in a the dryer. No, you didn't do that. You just forgot about it. But you don't want to have that argument at that moment on the phone call. So you say, Well, yeah, I'll put them in the dryer. That's lying for convenience. Now, why does a woman lie to say, Well, I'm not hungry when you offer her? <laughs> Uh, an opportunity to say what she wants because you're about to go grab something to eat. You offered it to her. Now, let's keep it real. If she says no, that she's not hungry, that's not lying for convenience. Because the convenient thing would be to just tell, tell the guy what you want to eat. That would be the convenient thing to do. Okay? So she's lying to deceive you. Now, why is a woman lying to deceive you on something as simple as going to get something to eat? Now, honestly, I don't know that yet. I don't know that yet. But I use that example to try to, to make men think about the fact that women lie to them on a regular basis. All right? They, they do it on a regular basis. All right? So. You have to get used to the idea that women lie on a regular basis, all right? And if you don't get used to this idea, you're going to miss a lot of what they do, okay? Shout out to Peter Frank. Peter Frank says, uh, you can't hold black females accountable, dummy.
Okay, he's not a smart man because he's using the word dummy. <laughs> <laughs> all right he says you have no leverage okay peter doesn't have any leverage all right uh, black men cannot counter the system that they depend on the welfare state so peter for whatever reason believed that <laughs> most most black men depend on the welfare state now peter is obviously not that bright of a person because what black man is dependent upon the welfare state the welfare state is to help women not men the the reason the welfare state is in place is to help women get homes and food and other things for themselves and their children the black men ain't ain't dependent upon the system so what you're saying is not actually making sense all right if you think the system is is the only sense of leverage because you know i mean you could be saying that hey because you have no leverage because they have a system to depend on but he says you black men cannot counter they system they depend on so yeah you believe we have no leverage i get that but at the end of the day you have plenty of leverage you just don't know you got it and that's fine that's fine because what do women want they want men there's no system that you can put in place that's going to replace men all right women women want men all right and that's just that's what it comes out to at the end of the day if they didn't want men they wouldn't be having sex with them the way they have with them so they do want men and they argue and cry when men don't want them back women get very upset they have super negative reactions when a man doesn't want to kick it with them so yeah they do want men which means what you have leverage okay but unfortunately we got too many brothers who don't understand that they actually have some leverage okay they actually got some all right now the as i was saying there's nothing about women and morality that shows that they have more than men now if i were going to argue the point i would argue that men have more morality because men know a, a whole lot more about integrity men understand they need to keep their word on a regular basis okay men know they need to keep their word on a regular basis now is every man gonna be a hundred percent truthful of course not but we know to get along in this society you gotta build trust with people and if you break the trust of people because you're not used to keeping your word if you are a man people gonna hold you accountable to that you know people are gonna remind you about how you didn't keep keep your word okay it happens all the time you know you you, you go to your a friend you know when you, you know especially when you're a young man you know you're 18 19 20 21 you know you go to a friend hey man let me borrow a hundred dollars man i already gave you a hundred dollars such and such you know what i'm saying you still ain't gave that back to me you told me you was gonna get that back to me three weeks later you didn't even do it see that, that's the type of responses men get okay you're going to be quickly reminded about how you didn't keep your word all right you tell a, you know what i'm saying you tell a guy man hey let's meet up at such and such spot at such and such time man you told me that two weeks ago where you said let's meet up over there and then boom we, I, I came up there and you didn't even show see men gonna get reminded about how they don't keep their words so they're usually gonna have more integrity than women because we don't let men off the hook but see when it comes to women do black men know how to hold a black woman accountable and i'm gonna say for the vast majority the answer is no if a black woman tells you something do you make her actually keep her word or when she doesn't keep her word do you do anything to her do you even say something about it and truth the truth is a lot of people don't let's just be realistic y'all most men in the community don't choose to hold women accountable and a lot of it's because when it comes to a relationship standpoint men don't want to deal with the fact that they can be cut off from the pussy that's that's really what most of it is you know they think they might get cut off from the pussy if they hold a woman accountable and that can be true in some cases but why would you worry about that it's not like you're about to run out of pussy. 
There's <laughs> plenty of women out here. And guess what? They all got one. <laughs> you know, so the thing is, you uh, a lot of us are accustomed to letting things slide because we don't want to have an argument. You know, some people say they're just trying to keep the peace. And for me, if something is insignificant, I can let it go. But if it counts, I'm going to say something. Now, when it comes to women, if I'm dealing with a woman, I'm going to not let stuff go because I already know most women are used to lying to men and men ain't going to say nothing to them about it. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm just not going to let go because as I'm dealing with the woman, especially when she's a newer woman, I have to train her that lying to me is a bad idea. Yes, I go in with the understanding that that I have to train her that lying to me is a bad idea. Because is she going to lie? Sure she is. Because that's what they're used to doing. You know, so if you don't call them out for lying, then, of course, they're going to do what they're used to doing and what they've done in other relationships they had with people and not just a sexual relationship, just in general. Women are very comfortable lying to men, very comfortable. And that's why I use the, the example of uh, going to the restaurant. It's like they just lie. They're so comfortable lying to men that they do it when you can't even really find a positive reason. Any kind of anything that even looks positive of why they actually lie. They'll tell you no when you when you're going out to get food. And this is an opportunity for you to order exactly what they want. But they'll still tell you they ain't hungry. That ain't lying for convenience. It is lying to deceive you, but the deception doesn't actually help her because you bring in less food rather than more food. So it doesn't make sense, which means what? It's just some emotional reason. Because there's no sense to be made of it. Okay? It's just for some emotional reason. Okay? And and trust me, I've heard women do literally tell me from an emotional standpoint that they rather just eat their man's food. They have told me that. So there's a lot of women who just want to know that they can take whatever they, they man has. Now, is that healthy? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. It doesn't sound healthy to me that a woman wants to eat her man's food, even though she understands that her man has no issue providing some food for her. But mentally, she wants to eat her man's food. And they've told me this flat out. They just want to eat, eat their man's food. They, they've even told me it tastes better when it's off their man's plate. They've literally told me this. Multiple women have told me this in, on multiple occasions that did not know each other. It literally tastes better when it's your food. And, it, and they could have the exact same thing, but yours somehow tastes better to them. Now, that is an, from an emotional place because it's not logical at all. OK. And and, th and they're telling the truth when they say this, too. OK, they, they saying this from the bottom of their heart. I promise you. All right. Now, Doberman says black men can and should hold women accountable. One of the most profound things I have heard on this show is that black men should not be afraid to dump or walk away from a woman. And that is a great way to hold them accountable, which I definitely was going to bring up. That's for sure. And I want to see one other thing Doberman said here. He said, if you don't learn anything else from this show, then make sure you take Roger's advice on the power of no. Just understanding that will take you a long way. Uh, hey, shout out to you, Doberman. That's very true thing. Very true thing. If men would learn how to just say no, and you got to say no to whatever level of nonsense that you want to. And that's that's something guys really need to understand. It's OK to say no to a bunch of nonsense because women will love to keep the door open for nonsense on a regular basis. That's just something they do. OK, as again, as I was just telling you, they have literally told me if they're taking food off their man's plate. Somehow it literally tastes better to them. OK. Again, that's emotional. There's nothing logical you can apply toward that. But I'm not even saying those women were saying that were even lying. I could tell by the looks on the face and the passion they said what the, what they said. They that was the absolute truth to them. 
That is something they, they believe wholeheartedly. Okay? That is absolutely the truth to them. All right. Shout out to Rael in the building. He says, black men are raised to <laughs> are raised to kowtow to black females collectively. Their genetic disposition is to fear a woman. This, excuse me, this is why it's hard to get black men on code. Now, that is true. A lot of us are raised to be afraid of women. Okay. And that's why we don't hold women accountable. And I definitely agree with that. And he also says black women understand brotherhood better than black men do because no matter how much they hate each other, they are in complete agreement viewing black men as their enemy and come together on that. And for most of the, the, the black community, yeah, this is that's an absolutely true statement. OK, no matter how mad they are, the brother, you know, what I'm saying no matter what's going on between them and their sisters. You know, if, if it's about dumping on you as a black man, they know how to get together and dump on you. They definitely know how to do that. So that's just real talk right there. But the thing is, we have to figure out as men how to hold black women accountable because a lot of us are not going to be taught that at home. That's just that's just the truth. We're not going to be taught that at home. And one of the easiest ways to start holding a, a woman accountable, and trust me, it's going to be very annoying to them is to literally actually hold them accountable for the things they say. You know, if they say they're going to do X, Y, and Z, and they say a lot of stuff for the moment, and that's how women are. They just say a lot of stuff for the moment. You know, if you ask them to put some clothes in a, in a, in a, uh, in a washing machine and wash them, they'll say yes for the moment, even though they already know in their mind they're not going to do it. But they will say yes for the moment just so they can do whatever it is that they're trying to do at that particular time. They may be trying to get back to some television show they're watching. They'll say, yeah, I'm going to wash your clothes. They know they ain't going to wash your clothes. They already know it. But they're going to say yes in that moment so they can focus on watching that television show, which is what, the, what they're into. Now, a person like myself, I'm going to jump on a woman's case for not washing the clothes. Now, can I go actually wash them myself? Sure, I know how to do it. It ain't like I can't do it myself. But if I told her to do it and she said, OK, and she doesn't do it, then I know I have to jump on her case and make her do it. Because if I don't, I'm setting the tone that she can just say whatever she wants to say to me at any particular time. And I'm supposed to let it go. And that's what a lot of women want. They want men to just let stuff go because it allows them to continue to be deceitful people. Now, the question you have to ask yourself, is it worth it to be in a relationship with a woman who is going to be deceitful to you? OK, because women are trained to be deceitful, period. That's just the society we live in right now. So I can't tell you they ain't going to be deceitful to random people. But can you at least start with a woman not being deceitful to you? <laughs> Go ahead, though, man. How you doing, brother? Doing good, doing good. How you doing, Ter? Doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Yeah, I was uh, listening to the, to the stream and playing some um some call. Um, I'm actually playing Call of uh, Call of Duty, and I thought I'd uh, hop on the the panel for a bit. Um, one one of the most profound things you've said before is um don't worry about what anybody else is doing, and don't be afraid to to walk away from uh, from a bad deal. And um, like um, after you've walked away from a bad deal, um, that's that's kind of the extent of um, like what you should really consider whether or not this person has other options somewhere else. Really doesn't matter because as far as you're concerned, you should only really deal with your kind of a immediate uh, like a reaction to a given situation. And um, I think that uh, that that uh, like a policy or that philosophy merits like a kind of uh, like a reviewing. Just given some of the things uh, that you're hearing in the comments. <laughs> You saw that? You need, I got you. Bye-bye. Yeah, sorry about that, man. I had to take an important phone call. Um, I, so I, I personally didn't even hear what you said, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no worries. I, yeah, I was, I was just saying that, um, yeah, the same thing I said uh, before about um, one of the most uh, profound things you've ever said is, um, like, not being uh, afraid to walk away from a bad deal. If you know a situation is a is a bad deal, then like you should only really be concerned about like um, walking away from it, whether or not this person has other options or somebody else is going to t 
take the same deal really doesn't um, really doesn't matter. And sometimes I feel as though many of us struggle to, to understand that you should only really be concerned about like um, like um, like defending yourself from a bad situation. And like whether or not this other person you're dealing with who uh, means to harm you could find someone else like that doesn't matter. Like uh, you're only holding them like, accountable in um, like uh, in relation to how they deal with you as an individual. What? Yeah. And if a lot more of us actually held them accountable to how they deal with us as an individual, they will actually start acting better to other people because they're going to have the expectation that they're not going to be able to get away with all kinds of stuff. And women have an expectation to get away with crap. That's it, just is what it is. They they have that expectation. And shout out to Brotherly Love 215. He said, Roger, some brothers will listen to understand black women are white supremacist <laughs> deployment rules. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? That's a good way to put it because there's a lot of rules that they seem to engage with and they have never even met each other, but they, they seem to be following the same playbook. So they are accepting a lot of the programming. Okay. Now the, the thing is with me, like I said, the, at, at the beginning of a relationship, okay. It, it's hard for a woman with me because I'm going to actually make her keep her word, you know? Uh, and, and women, they don't even think about the stuff they say. Sometimes there was one woman I, I went out with while I was going out with, um, I literally had a date plan with her. And I had to cancel last minute. Had to do something, but it was something involving making money too. So it came up, I had to do it. And then she basically uh, gave me a little speech about, you know, um, you know, if you go, if you say you're going to do it, let's stick to the pr plan. Don't have me make plans to go out. And then when uh, the next time, you know, when it's time for us to go, then you're going to cancel on me at the last minute. And, and you know, because I didn't get ready and did X, Y, and Z and all that, right? She literally told me this. All right. Then like the next week or so, next two weeks or something, we had another day scheduled, right? So it's time to go out. I kid you not. Same woman who just gave me this, <laughs> her little speech about how it's important to not set her up to, uh, to prepare for a date if I'm going to cancel a date on her. I kid you not. It's time to go, go pick up. She had a friend's house playing cards. Same woman told me how important it is. <laughs> You need to, if you say it, you need to make sure you do it. Okay, cool. All right, so now when it come up to her, I get to the house to pick up. She's like, oh, I'm at my friend's house playing cards. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, now how y'all think that worked? <laughs> of course, it, it didn't work out well with me. And then, you know what I'm saying, uh, not too long after that, we just, we were done. Because I dropped her, you know. And, uh but that's the expectation a lot of them have. They'll tell you something about, you know, you make sure you keep your word. But when it comes to them, they don't have a sense about keeping their own word. So that they have let me know beyond a shadow of a doubt. What they say has no real importance. OK, and that's something black men have not been taught to pay attention to. A lot of what black women say don't actually have importance because it means nothing to them. If it don't mean anything to them, why should it mean something to me? That makes I, I, no sense. I, I, I also have um, um I, I agree hundred percent. I um I also have some some uh, like really weird thing I wanted to call out as as well too. Sometimes with um um like um obviously like in, in the situation you just um you just uh, went over um your your personal situation. Um once you were done like you really didn't care afterwards. It's just, it's, it literally is that simple. Like when you understand that it's simple enough to just hold somebody accountable, you drop them and that makes things easier for the next person. Then like, if we all did, uh, acted like that, then one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I mean, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, then you would have a greater effect for all of us. And uh, a lot of the time, whenever it is that you, you go and you say something about holding people accountable. Um, I've noticed this weird phenomenon where a lot of the guys will say, well, oh, well, there's always going to be a next person. There's always going to be a next person um <clears throat> like any woman out there like regardless of how unattractive she is there are, there always is going to be like uh, that next that next guy that she could she could meet up with but like uh as you've said before like on on the topic like it really is just 
just about who, whom it is that you take into to your own life and don't worry about whether or not you should get another person It's just like just deal with things like worry about what's on your plate and a lot of the time another really weird thing that some of some of these guys say is like oh well they could always um like i find somebody else there'll always be some next phallus um if many of these women are content to, for example, we've used, we've heard the government being used as an explanation for why it is that uh, you can't hold the women accountable. If if these women are, are content to to live in poverty, if they're okay to like uh, hook up with uh, two hundred guys in their their lifestyle, if they're okay to um, just like um, raise kids that um, are like um, that don't amount to anything, boys that can't read and things of this nature, and then you can't hold them accountable, well. That is their choice, but you could dictate what it is that you want to do for your own lifestyle. But um, I've noticed that a lot of these guys have a very like um, weird kind of lack of resolve where they end up like uh, you see it even even the, the, the uh, with um, the way in which they'll take on terms and, and that don't actually like um, terms and narratives that don't actually speak to to their perspective. They're more deferential to other people's definition of terms or other people's spin on the narrative or other people's perspective on say accountability. Like she. Could just find another one it's a very weird kind of uh mental like a uh, thing i'm not saying uh, i'm saying this to to insinuate anyone's stupid but it's just it's a very characteristic thing with many of us where we end up even speaking from other people's perspective even if what it is that we're saying doesn't actually like make any sense it's it's very weird and it's very bizarre what you know what the thing is that that's the way we've been trained and that's why i keep trying to remind people that if you're just a normal regular person here in america you were trained to be a white supremacist a and everything about the gynocracy is involved in white supremacy and you're taught to defer to anything that is not to the benefit of a black man and shout out to brotherly love 215 thank you for the super chat my brother he says another fire topic appreciate you brother and also shout out to timmy fields as well for the for the the, the super chat Thank you, my brother. Didn't say anything, but I definitely appreciate it. And see, the thing is, we defer because in our minds, we're, we are, it's hard for us to mentally hold that woman accountable. So if you're talking about holding a woman accountable and a man says, well, well, she can always find another, you know, talking about another man, you know, which I'm not going to say ain't true. Women can find another dick to jump on. That's just the way it is. But see, a lot of guys don't even say stuff like that because, you know, that would be offensive to women. But that's the reality of it. She can find another dick to jump on. You know, that's not going to be taken away from her. But the exactly. thing is, is <laughs> what is the value of a woman who continues to jump on a new dick every, every, uh, you know what I'm saying, every other day? You know what I'm saying? She can do it, sure. But what's the value of that woman? So th the thing is, they're they're actually trying to rationalize not holding her accountable well since she can find somebody else that won't hold her accountable then i'm not going to hold her accountable that's what they're admitting to at the end of the day now the thing is as a man you have to make a decision about what type of lifestyle you want to live because you got to live your own life i don't care what a woman thinks she can get away with with me when she meet, meets me she can get away with what i allow her to that's it you know if it if it's not that she might do it behind my back but there's there's things she cannot do and i'm just gonna let her get away with it, it just is what it is now am i concerned that if i won't let her get away with something that she's gonna leave no and no man should be that concerned if a woman if a woman won't accept what you say then how how can you lead that particular woman and, exactly. and um, unfortunately men have not been taught that they are supposed to be the leaders of their relationship so i don't care about a woman's opinion well i'm not gonna listen to what you say okay fine you ain't gotta listen you just can't be with me while you're not listening that's all because i i can't make you listen now i technically can't do that unless i physically do something to you so i ain't worried about trying to make you listen no you just can't be with me while you don't listen. You can't benefit from me while you don't listen. And a lot of men just don't see their own, they don't see themselves as important enough that a woman should have to give them whatever respect they want if they're going to benefit from that man. It just, it, that just needs to be the case. 
Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. a very good, very good way of putting it. Like, um, a, a lot of us really are just looking for uh, an excuse to, like, uh, compromise, like, uh, doing what, uh, like, what is obviously the, the correct thing. And you see that reflected in the fact that, like, um, they'll go to the extremes, like, um, like even the idea of, like, um, um, like social services, like every, like, um, like reasonable, reasonably stable, like society, needs to have a, kind of a bottom to keep people from, like, um, like creating, like, um, um, <clears throat> like homeless camps and things of this nature. I do believe you need a robust social uh, services system, but like uh, when you have guys arguing that there is an established bottom to the society. Um, that like um, on some level, like um, you'll always be fed in America. You'll always have some form of uh, of housing, and therefore, like uh, myself as an individual who um, I go to work, I like uh, um, take care of myself, and then I shouldn't be able to uh, enforce any authority because there's an established bottom to the society. It's a very like um, to your point about like uh, self importance. It's a very self defeating and self undermining way of. Um, of uh, looking at the situation and also uh, what you said about like um um how like uh, to characterize the fact that um the the woman will always have options it's like well options for what exactly which is you the way you put it was like a very good way of pay, putting it and when you make it as obvious as that then you you you, you it really like uh, it really emphasizes the fact that it's not um like you're not dealing with somebody who has quote unquote options you're dealing with somebody who um is um like um like is willing to to, to kind of uh, destroy themselves at which point you know you shouldn't be interacting with that person in the first place but because many of us want to kind of uh, self undermine like uh, we'll even speak about quote unquote options in a way that's uh, inconsistent with the nature of what it is that uh, the alternative to cooperating is yeah yeah and, and a lot of guys have not figured that concept out that just because you have options don't mean they're good ones there have been plenty of people in a situation where all they got is bad choices in front of. Them. You know, sometimes all you get to do is pick the lesser of the bad choices in front of you. So if you move in a way where you're worried about, well, you know, well, she can always find somebody else. Well, that's true. There's somebody, I grant you, there's always some dude willing to stick his dick in her. That's, that's literally <laughs> what's out there. But if she don't value me, she's going to have to find one of them. I'm not worried about her if she's not with me. See, we got this mindset, and it's because of how we're taught growing up and things like that, that we should be concerned with what's happening to women that we are not with. I'm not concerned with what she does after I'm done with her. That's that's not my concern. My concern is what she's going to do when she's with me. Okay? There are certain concerns you'll have of what she did before she got with me, but most of my concerns is what she's going to do when she's with me. What happens after me? means nothing to me and guys need to really have that understanding about life if you don't do that it's going to be hard for you to hold any woman accountable because you're worried about how you're worried about what their outcomes are going to be i've said plenty of times man is supposed to be a leader protector and provider okay you protect and provide those you lead once you leave my leadership i'm not protecting you i'm not providing for you so why would i concern myself with your outcome it's not that big a deal to me but go ahead, Al. How you doing, brother? Can you hear me, Roger? Yes, sir. Top of the morning to you, Doberman. Uh, like I said in the chat earlier, sorry about that, bro. I, my fingers was all over the place trying to uh, make a uh, a purchase, so I'm sorry if I erased something that you wrote. But uh, peace to the channel and the pat panel. Uh, long little habitual line steppers, yay, yay. You know how we do, Roger. But um, all you boys, y'all been saying nothing but truths, factuals, and actuals. I can't not disagree with not one thing you or Doberman's been saying. And I, you know, I'm with I'm with the philosophy and motto of Officer Charles Falkland. Shout out! If we can't lead, then we must lead. Lead when they acting like that. If we can't lead, then we must lead. I digress. All right. And shout out to Gilgami. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my brother. He sends a super chat and says, greetings to all. Long live the habitual line steppers. If she tests, she only tests once. There's no reset button. Gilgami, that, that is brilliant. Thank you very much for saying that, brother. That is brilliant. Because, yes, women do try to test me on a regular basis. I personally make them flunk their own tests. 
Because once you test me, you're going to see you ain't got it like you thought you had it. Okay? <laughs> I don't care nothing about women trying to test me. Okay? I'm going to do what I want to do the way I want to do it. I'm going to lead her the way I think she should be led. And if she don't like the way I'm leading her, it is on, it's her responsibility to, to leave. That's, that's what it is. It's her responsibility to leave if I don't like how, if she doesn't like how I'm leading her. Now, if I don't like how she's following, it's my responsibility to kick her out the door. Now, a lot of brothers don't really have that understanding. It is your responsibility to hold them accountable when they are in your circle. You know, I've I've been out in places and done um, really got at women when they were not doing something they were supposed to do. Because because this is not just for relationships. Relationships I have a large part of it. But see, if if I'm out at, at a if I'm just at a grocery store and you don't do something right, maybe you don't bag my stuff or whatever the case is, I'm jumping down your throat. Okay, I'm gonna get your managers involved. Anybody who shows me any level of disrespect, I'm going to see whatever, what can I do to make their they life a lot harder at that particular point in time, you know, and a lot of us, we let small things go, you know, I will get you in trouble with your managers, all right, I ain't got no problem with it, all right, I cannot accept a, a norm of just because I'm a black man, you're going to treat me differently, I'm not going to accept that as a norm, now, trust me, I understand it is the norm, but I don't have to do things that show I accept it. I'm going to do everything I can to hurt people in ways that I that I can do and make sure that I apply pressure to them for being that way toward a black man. Because if I don't know you, the only reason you would mistreat me is because I'm a black man. That's all I'm going with. If, if you don't know me and I don't know you, the only thing you really can know from me without me saying anything to you or having any kind of real conversation with, with you is you know I'm a black man. So that's why you got a problem with me. So I ain't gonna let stuff slide the way a lot of other people are gonna let stuff slide. And and but if when it comes to these relationships, the way we treat women does have an effect on how they treat us in the rest of society. Okay, if a woman tells you she gonna do something, make her do it. Point blank, period. If she won't do it, kick her out. It shouldn't be much of a question. Everything she says she going to do, make her start sticking to her word. I promise you that's going to be rough on women right there. Make her stick to her actual words and remind her that this is what she said. Nobody forced you to say it. Okay? It is what it is. It, it's going to be hard, y'all. I promise you that because I have not been through it so many times. Why I actually make women keep their word, it's going to be hard on them because a lot of them just ain't used to it. Man, who you tell? I'm dealing with it right now. See, I'm like, no, nah, remember what you said? Like you said, I didn't make you say that. You said you would go do that. And I be using them exact same. I use that same verbiage on them too, Roger. You absolutely right. That's this is the this is the language you must use, gentlemen, when dealing with. Them. Hold them to their word. If they say they go do something, make them fucking do it. Okay. Yeah, and, and see, you have to break stuff down. Like even Sugar Mom, you know, like she tries to take shots. And I know to to get rise out of men, but see, y'all y'all have to understand things like this and explain this, people. She said, "Did you say black men get treated differently?" Now I just explained that if somebody don't know me, the only thing they know about me is I'm a black man. They can see me and see I'm a black man. Okay, and then she said, "This ain't the victim Olympics." Now what did I just say behind that? I said, "If you do something to me." I'm going to do everything I can to put some type of pressure on you to make you do the right thing, which means what? There is no victim. You're not going to be allowed to do something to me and get away with it. You, you see what I'm saying? So this is her. I mean, this being silly at the end of the day, but Sugar Bomb, that's you trying to create a narrative that's not there. I'm not going to let you get away with doing stuff to me. And which is also one of the reasons that I've been on this platform multiple times. And I've always said that if a woman hits you as a man, you in a fight. See, I, I don't even just say hit her back. No, she hits you. You in a fight. You win it. I, I, I have to say, Sugar Bum is um, she's a good like uh, she is a good troll. It's just that time she went a little bit too far. And <clears throat> like uh, she should have been more subtle with her trolling. <laughs> well, well, my thing is, I, I want her to be here because I know she needs to get these understandings. So, and, so 
they women like that don't bother me. I, I get it already. I understand how they've been trained. I understand what's to be expected of them and things like that. So none of none of what they do bothers me. But you gotta break stuff down so they actually get the lesson. And and, and I know she didn't catch it on that particular point, which is why she said what she said. You know, they look to, to say black men are victims because they, they want to see you as weak and they want to see you as a victim. It makes them more comfortable to see you as a victim and it justifies them trying to bully you. Black women try to use society to bully you. That's true. And in our, in our interactions with, with both uh, WS and also with um, with uh, with, uh, with um, the situation we have with our, our women, a lot of the time what they're trying to goad you into doing is taking on a, a stoic kind of position where you allow others to actually abuse you and then you ignore it because you think ignoring it makes you more tough. But it, with that, what's actually happening is people are just taking advantage of you. So um, that that's that's really where that, that kind of perspective comes from. You're supposed to just tolerate it and then like uh, feel tough because you're taking on abuse for no reason. Well, that's where a lot of our training comes from and it's not great training. A lot of men will tell you that if women do something to you to, just to be stoic about it, you don't say nothing. You just let it pass. Okay, well, that's telling the woman that I can get away with it. That's literally what you're telling the woman. If you're not going to do anything about it, you're telling her it's okay for her to do it and she can get away with it. Why would you want to teach women that they can get away with stuff? Now, I understand there's a lot of men who say that and they want to look at it and they, and they try to say it's coming from a manly place. But the truth is, most men are, are in, in our society, most black men are trained to be afraid of black women. It's something that we don't want to deal with because it's painful to us from an ego standpoint. But most of us are trained to be afraid of black women. That's why when they do stuff to us, we won't call the manager on them. You want to bother me? I'm going to make you suffer as best I can. Now, I get it. In some cases, you're going to have so many people on BS that you can't really make anything happen to them. But you can definitely try. <laughs> and if you try enough times, some of them going some of them going to go down. Somebody going to get written up somewhere, somebody going to lose their job somewhere. And the thing is, I'm not one of those people that, you know, like other people would try to get somebody bothered at their job, then they say, "Well, you know, well, I don't want him to lose his job." I I'm not one of those folks. If you lose your job, that's your business. I don't care. You you picked the wrong one. It's it's that simple to me. You picked the wrong one. So if I got time, and I got to make a complaint. If it goes to you losing your job, I'm totally okay with that. I, I'm not that concerned with what, what's going to happen to you, especially the fact that you're a woman. Yes, yeah, social services out there to catch you, which means why should I care whether you lost your job or not? And then there's men out here. There's some men who will take you on if you just act right. So you're fine. I don't look at women as if they're in jeopardy. And I think a lot of black men need to stop seeing them as somehow being in jeopardy because there's too much stuff to catch them. They're not in jeopardy if they live in America. They're just not. And shout out to Mo Mer excuse me, Murray Mo return. Shout out to you, brother. He says, a <laughs> Lord have mercy. He says, a Keisha at my job, who is already a single baby mama, just told me that she's pregnant. Turns out her new baby daddy is a pookie and already has kids himself. It's really just the same group of men. Well, see, this this is the thing about that. Um, and this that actually shows, it, it actually brings up a point where men are having trouble holding black women accountable. There's a whole narrative out there about how women only deal with one kind of man. A lot of people say this narrative. That's totally untrue. Okay? But they do claim this narrative. And a lot of times... They do that based on the fact that you have so many women who have kids by some of the same men. Now, I get it. It was a dude at McDonald's I, I mentioned before. The man had 17 kids, <laughs> worked at McDonald's, okay? I forget how, exactly how many women it was, but it was a lot of them. But 17 kids while working at McDonald's. And I don't remember exactly what he, what he had to pay out in child support, but it was something silly, like a dollar or 80 cents a month, something like that. It was less than two bucks. I do know that it was like less than two bucks a month he was paying out for, for the for the children. So we have this narrative to say, well, you know, well, well, women are messing with the same guys. No, they're not messing with the same guys. There's only a small percentage of black men willing to give them children. That's really what's going on, especially when you 
look at the fact that black men use more condoms more than any other group of men. So what does that tell you? It's not that they're not having sex. And a lot of people give that narrative that they're just not having sex. Uh, maybe young young people, you know, because I, I know a couple of young men, you know, that, that they didn't have sex till they was like 19. But now guess what? They're sexual now. They're sexually active guys. They didn't do it until they were grown. And honestly, that's better because sex should be something reserved for adults, truth be told. So it's not even a bad thing. But that doesn't mean men can't get sex. It just means a lot of men ain't won't give a woman a baby. That's a whole different dynamic. And that's actually the one thing that black men are kind of holding black women accountable at. The rest of it, they fall, <laughs> they falling off miserably. But at least a lot of them ain't giving them a baby. Okay. But the 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 but you take the accountability away by saying that the women aren't having sex with the men. No, they are. You know what I'm saying? Black women have went out of their way to become America's hoes. They having sex with black men and all kinds of other men. And you know, uh, BGS just kind of uh, showed that when he when he gave that information about how it was more than a million uh, uh, black women with children from men outside the race. You know that actually goes to that fact black women have been america's hoes since they've gotten here now that that sounds bad but it's still the truth when black women got here to this country they have been sleeping with black men and the slave masters and all that type of stuff okay now you can't trip about what they had to do when they were slaves but once they got free they still was having sex with with white men even though they weren't with the white men and guess what? When you start having sex with multiple men at the same time, and yes, a lot of black men were married to women, but they women were having sex with white men, you know, which like Black Rule has told y'all about that that uh with the redheaded stepchild, you know, that that thing became something because it was happening on a regular basis. Okay. So what have been what have black women been to other people of this country? They America's hoes. If you talk to any other group of, 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 of people, talk to the younger ones. How do they get sexual experience when they're still uh, kind of afraid of women? They start sleeping sleeping with black women. And once they get comfortable, they go back and start dealing with their own women. That's a regular thing amongst other groups of men. Now, some people are going to say, well, you know, that's him being mean, saying that they're America's hoes. No, I'm not calling them America's hoes on some, I'm trying to be mean. No, I'm calling them what they are on facts okay i didn't tell them to go have sex with a bunch of guys especially guys outside of black america i didn't tell them to do that so i didn't arrange for them to be america's hoes they arranged it because they have freedom so whose fault is it that they have sex with all these other groups of men it's their fault that's a good point and if you listen to actually um the dialogue that's uh that's happening from uh well i'll let al uh, hop on uh, um before I, before I wrap this up but um um, if you listen to, to the dialogue, when you have women openly stating that, um, well, there's always a next one, right? Then, well, what does that mean? So you can't have it both ways where you're saying there's oh, there's always a next one and it doesn't matter because there's an unlimited supply of men, right? And um, not like I'd be called like America's hoes, right? It's just if, if you're going to say the former, then you have to accept the latter. Absolutely. And thank you, Doberman. He sent the uh, cash out. He said, support black men content creators. Hey, that's great advice, y'all. That's all I'm going to say on that one. That is great advice. <laughs> uh, okay, I guess AL ain't ready yet. What, is this closing statement? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not closing out, but he just oh, won't okay. give you a chance since you just came back up. That's all. Oh, no, no, no. I just came up because I kept falling down. Y'all guys, y'all know I'm ad lib. Okay. It's sad. I'm I'm smoking and drinking. <laughs> oh, okay. We got you. <laughs> All right. Well, so when it when it comes to holding women accountable, what does it look like? Now, I say all the time that men have to learn to dump women. Now, why do I say men have to learn to dump women? Because it's something they need to learn how to respond to. They need to learn how to respond with by being seen by men that they're unworthy okay now i know a lot of people just do the i mean i ain't gonna say a lot but there's a, 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 a amount of people who 
who are going to go in the SYSBM direction. And I have no problem with that because I do support those guys. You have to use your choice. But the thing is, black men in general should not be afraid to deal with black women and then dump some of them. Now, if you end up going SYSBM anyway, so be it. That's their fault. Okay. I don't blame black men for being SYSBM. That's something that's clearly women's fault. And see, this is the rough part about relationships that a lot of people have yet to learn to deal with. As a man, you are the standard when it comes to relationships. It's about what you're going to accept. It's about what you're going to be willing to protect. Okay? It's about you being a leader. So women have to find a man that they're comfortable following. If they cannot find a man that they're comfortable following, they're just too rebellious at the end of the day. If no man fits them where they are comfortable following, they're just too rebellious. That's on them. And there's always going to be people out there that are, you know, evil. There's people that just not that good of, good of a person. There's people who want to, you know, their their uh lust for chaos is so powerful that men will not accept them because men like order more than women do. But women, women to- like chaos, brother. They like chaos. And if, as long as they in chaos, they think that's normal. See, to us, see, that's like, mm-mm, you going to make me mad because I have to have structure and order to survive. It's world functions on structure and order, not chaos. But I got girls. Well, the world also functions on a lot of stuff that men put in place, <laughs> you know, so so that's what it comes out to at the end of the day. But see, if in the black community, men are taught that if you don't have a woman, somehow that's your fault as a man. Which literally makes no sense. It does. It makes zero sense at all. It is not your responsibility as a man to look at women and say, well, you know, something's got to be wrong with me. Now, can you improve yourself as a man? Absolutely. Should men improve themselves? Absolutely. Are we naturally going to do that? Absolutely. Because men like to win. It's just, that's just, <laughs> that's just how it goes. Men like to win. So they're going to improve themselves in general. Okay. But if you compare, a, if, if you look at a man and say he's not a man because he don't have a woman, it's because you're stupid. Now, stupidity is a choice. You have to choose to be that stupid. But in every other society, it's really a man is a man, and and you measure a woman based off the man that she can get. You don't bet. You don't measure women based off of men. You know, I've I've told y'all that before. Manhood is about your character. After you have a good character, then it's about your accomplishments. Okay? You have to have the good character first. Because you can accomplish all the things in the world and still not be looked at correctly. That's And I've used Hitler as an example many a times. Hitler was a very accomplished man. Very charismatic man. But when we look back on him in history, we don't look at him as one of the greatest men. You know, we look at him as one of the worst men in history. All right? It's about your character first, then your accomplishment. If you can get your character straight and just start making some accomplishment, you in good shape, period. But see, in the black community, a lot of people will attack men because they believe they don't have a woman, which means what? They are setting a tone that a woman can make you a man, which is a completely stupid idea. Because if you can have 30 women, how's that going to help you do anything if the 30 women aren't helping you? See, a woman's job is to be a help me. That's just what it comes down to at the end of the day. All right. Which means what? The man has to already be doing something. That is true. Because a woman can't help you if you're not already doing something. People who help you are people that join you in something you're already doing. But we don't. Well, we're not supposed to measure men based on women. That is a completely stupid idea. And because that idea is so prevalent in the black community, it's a way that women aren't held accountable. Because if you have a mindset 
that your measure of a man is based on a woman, what does that mean? That means you don't dump a woman even though she's no good for you. Because I want to be viewed as a man. If I dump this woman who's no good for me, that will change how I see myself and that will change how other people see me. And that is something horrible that's been going on in the black community that a lot of people buy into you measure manhood based on women. Now, in no other society does that fly. Now, when you compare just the different groups of people in America, because, see, if you leave it at just in America, that's an even playing field. There's, there's different things from outside of America. There's different cultures outside of America. But if we just look at it just in America, if we look at different groups of people in America where other people do not measure manhood based on women, are they doing better than black people? The answer is mainly yes. Most people have a better family structure. They, they have less depression. They have less problematic uh, behaviors. They go to prison less. They have better lifestyles in general because they do not believe that you measure men based on women. But they do measure women based on the man that they got. And if we were smart enough as black men to push that idea because it is the actual correct idea. That's how you measure a woman based on the man she got. Because what does that mean? You're looking at what she was able to get based on a man's character and then what he decided to accomplish. And what does this mean? For a woman to be looked at as valuable. Well, if I see her with a man who has a horrible character, because, I mean, let's be real. There's going to be some men out there with horrible characters. But see, in the black community, they love men with horrible character. How do you know? Because women love men that go to prison. Now, does that mean every black man who went to prison did it? No, it don't mean that. But if you're looking for a guilty party, prison is a great place to start. You're going to have more guilty people in prison than people of, 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 of any other section of, of, this, of society for doing something that's considered negative. You're going to be able to find that easier in prison. You're going to be able to find murderers easier in prison. It's not like it ain't people walking amongst us that ain't murdered somebody but just never got caught. But if you round up a thousand people at random that's in society and then you round up a thousand prisoners at random, it's easier to find murderers in that thousand people in prison. Okay? It's just easier. And women like men of bad character in our community. That's why they love prisoners so much. Okay? I told y'all, on I've said on Plenty of Case, they like a compromised man. All right? And part of him being compromised is his character. His character will keep him in compromised positions. And shout out to the sponsor of today's stream, Ama Z. Great to see you here, my brother. Great to see you here. He says, continue the great topics, Raj. Hey, brother. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. And I'm definitely going to try to do so. All right. Now. Yeah, Roger. You can't let them compromise. You can't never let them, gentlemen, can't never let them put you in a compromising position. That's what they live for. Absolutely. And see, the, the thing is, why would women pick these guys that go to prison like that? What well, they're looking for someone of bad character because they don't have good character themselves. See, if you're a woman and you're of good character, you want a man of good character. You know, and a, and a lot of guys still don't get that yet. Women of good character want a man of good character because you can't hang out together if one of you have great character and the other one has a horrible character and be cool all the time. Now, do I know some people who got some pretty horrible character? Yeah, I know them. Do I hang out with them? Nope. <laughs> Just is what it is. As time has moved on and people have gotten older and, and expressed more and more of who they are as a person, have I stopped talking to people I used to talk to? Absolutely. 
because they don't have a they don't have the character that it, it it takes to be in my circle. Just is what it is. I may know you from grammar school or something. You know, I may know you from going to church together with you, whatever case is. I may know you from a job I used to have or something like that. But if you don't have the character it takes to be in my circle, I'm going to stop knowing you. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. It is what it is. I'm not going to miss you. And and see, that's the attitude that every man should have with, when it comes to women. So how do you hold a woman accountable? Yes, you do actually have to dump some of them. If you have women who are not being what you need them to be in a relationship, at some point in time, black men are going to have to learn to dump them. It is an absolute shame that most black women dump the men they have. Even in, the, in, in, in regards to the fact that a lot of them didn't even deserve the man they had. But see, the thing is, we allow women to think more highly of themselves because they we don't dump them. So that means their dysfunction is OK. That's how they read that based on the communication that we as black men have told them. Their dysfunction is OK. So if you ever wonder why there's so many dysfunctional women and it doesn't make a difference of what income level they're, they're in or what class they're in, however you see the separation, you see a lot of women who still engage in the same behaviors because across the board, men have not communicated to women that dysfunction is not okay. We have to communicate that to women. But you but the only way to do that, you actually actually gotta hold the woman that you deal with accountable and you're gonna have to dump them at some point in time. Also, I don't we, mean need a dump button. Y'all need y'all need y'all should come equipped with a dump button and be prepared to use it. Hey, uh, evacuation dump button. Like I gotta evacuate the premises. This is not good for my health and well being. Y'all boys better remember that. Yeah, and and, and also we, we have to take into account that when it when it comes down to it, you know you're gonna have to hold women accountable. Yes, for the stuff they say. You're gonna have to have quote unquote arguments with women sometimes. Now, why are you going to have to have an argument with a woman? And I know a lot of men are told that, you know, you don't argue with a woman. And I get it. A lot of men say that, but because it's a good way to to uh, hide the fact that you're scared of her. That's what it is, y'all. A lot of black men would tell you that. Now, I'm not saying you argue with a woman in every context. But there's sometimes you have to actually have an argument because it's going to be about you standing up for yourself and saying this is the program you're going to have to stick to. And she may have an issue with that because she's not going to be expecting to be held accountable. The woman's not going to have that expectation. When you're going to have to have now see, an argument ain't got to last long. You got to keep that in mind. Arguments don't have to last long. Look, this is what I told you to do. You already knew I told you to do it. You already said that you accepted this. So now that we're here at this at this point, you're going to actually have to do it. Now, if you don't want to do what we already said that's going to be done, you're going to have to, we're going to have to uh, separate, period. Okay, you're going to have to have this argument and let her know what time it is at the end of the day. I'm not going to play these games with you. We already said what it is, so do what I told you to do or it's over. You know, now that ain't the longest argument, but it is an argument at the end of the day. But but you got to top it off with, and that's how it is, and that's how it's going to be. What well, the thing is, you have to make sure that she understands this is the requirement that you're putting on her in order to be in your circle. And a lot of men forget to put a requirement on a woman to be in your circle. You can't just be in my circle for free. I got requirements. And there's a lot of women who are being trained that they don't have to deal with men's requirements. They just have to be a woman. Well, that's fine if you're going to be single. Okay, I ain't got no problem. If you want to be a single woman, knock yourself out. Okay? But if you're going to be in my circle, you're going to have to be led. I don't care nothing about what women think about this. And I know, like, when people bring up feminism and things like that, that's all well and good. But I don't care nothing about it. Okay? You, you go. You still gonna have to do what I say at the end of the day, and they, and there's women who are offended at the ideal of doing what I say, 
They offended at the idea. I'm, I'm, it don't bother me that they offended. They either going to do what I say, being offended, or they're not going to be around. It's that simple at the end of the day. Okay? It's, 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 these things should not be that big a deal. And shout out to Jay Bones for the super sticker. Appreciate you, my brothers. Appreciate you. Okay? The, the thing is, you, you are the leader. So you're going to have to always be constantly dictating what is going on in the relationship. If you give a woman room, excuse me, if you give a woman room to run the relationship, she's going to take that room. That's how they naturally are. OK, she's going to take that room. So the thing is, don't give it to her in anything that you don't want her to have it in. Now, me, I'm the type of person, I'm going to let the woman have reign over everything that's insignificant. If I don't care about it, she can have reign over it. And women do want to feel like that they're important and they want to feel that, like that that uh, the man that they with, you know, um, he appreciates their mind, the way they think and things like that. And you can show that because we want good women. We want some women that are smart. We want some women who's going to think about a situation and a woman who can give a perspective that sometimes we, we can be like, okay, well, that's a great perspective. We can just move in that direction. We do want a woman who's going to do that. But guess what? She still got to do what you want her to do whenever you want her to do it. It still comes with it at the end of the day. Okay? It still comes, it still comes down to that. You are the leader. And as a man, you're going to have to have the understanding they're not going to take care of you you are going to be the person that takes care of them. So at the end of the day, you are in charge. You're paying the cost to be the boss, whether anybody likes it or not. You're paying the cost to be the boss. And there's going to be some women who just don't want a boss. But see, you do get a boss when you're in a relationship as a woman. If a woman doesn't want a boss, she can be single. And guys should, should expect that of women who don't want a boss. Because, see, anytime you have two humans doing something, somebody's got to make that final decision at the end of the day. Okay? There's there's no getting around that. Somebody has got to make that final decision. You being the man, that should be you. Okay? But, again, if it's something that's insignificant, let her make the final decisions and all those things. You don't necessarily need to make a final decision about what y'all going to eat for dinner every night. Does that is that really important to you? <laughs> you know, you may uh you may try to 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 uh you may want to talk to a woman about say maybe you're trying to get your health together and she's making too many meals that are too greasy or something like that. You want her to to uh you know make some healthier meals. You can do that. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Just talk to her, have a conversation, but do you need to really try to tell her what to make for dinner every night. Like, that's not going to be done in, in most cases. And I get most men ain't going to be, they're not going to be worried about what she's making for dinner every single night. But that's one of those situations where you're allowing that woman to make decisions that aren't that, aren't that important to you. Uh, what's going on, KP? How you doing, my brother? Salute, so, Roger. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You're making some very, very great points. I want to tell a quick story about uh, it, 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 something that happened to me with me and my wife and her sister. So years ago, my wife, sister, wanted to come stay with us because something happened to a pookie that she was dating. So I allowed her to come. And as you said before in the, in the, in the opening, they they, they hate order. They hate structure. They hate discipline. So I told her, you need to be in my house because I live here. I go to work early in the morning. You need to be in my house by 11. The response was, but I'm grown. I said, OK, but you're grown. So you're begging me for somewhere to stay because you don't have anywhere to stay right now. And my house is big enough for you and your kids to stay with us because of the situation that occurred. So I gave her the ultimatum. Either you follow the rules or you get out. 
they thought I was insane. So they left. My wife backed me up on the play and basically said, hey, that's what he said, and that's it. And that kind of showed me where they were going before I kind of came into this space and started to understand more and more about the behavior. But that kind of showed me where they were going as far as their mentality. Yeah, I mean, that's a reality that we have to deal with. And this that is also how things show up outside of a relationship. Because, yeah, we do think about the stuff that's in relationships. And again, the relationship part is significant, but it also shows up outside of relationships. A woman goes into a home. Now, even though y'all are related, it's the fact that she went to another man's home and did not understand she got to follow that man's rules. That should be an already understood thing. You know, people that I'm related to, there's no mystery behind that. If I have to go to your home for any reason, I'm under your rules. It's that simple. I ain't got to like it, but I'm under them. And I'm going to be under them until I get out. But see, if you don't train women to be accountable, they will go to somebody else's homes and believe that they can be in that home and run in any kind of shape, way, and form. Period. That's just the way it is at the end of the day. All right? So I commend you for putting your foot down, and I commend your wife for knowing how to put her foot down on top of your foot. <laughs> Yo, know, that that that's so that was great on her part. And look, I've told people before, like, you know, I'm serious about being the ruthless nice guy. Now, I've told y'all before I had a, a woman who stayed with me, and her mother started coming around. And then her mother one time. She brought these kids around with her. I don't know who the kids were. I don't remember. I don't think they were her kids. It don't, it don't make a difference at the end of the day, but it was like some small kids. So the, the girl who I let stay there, this is her mother. And she then came over there with, with a couple of small children. And I forgot exactly what happened because it's insignificant to me. Okay. But somehow she said something disrespectful. She did something disrespectful. I don't remember what it was. Okay. Now, this is the dead of winter in Chicago. So I told her she got to get out. Now, she had two kids with her. It's the dead of winter in Chicago. It's cold outside, y'all. It probably was, you know what I'm saying? If it, you know, it could have been close to zero or whatever, because it was like smooth in the dead of winter. So I just said, okay, look, you got to go because you, you can't talk like that with me. Okay, not in my place. You can't talk like that. Because to me, it's extra rules when, when we inside that. Now, you got to respect me in general in public, but when you in my place, oh, no, you're going to have to really respect me then. <laughs> so whatever she said, I put her out. Now, the lady I'm letting stay, stay there, she lived there, and this is her mother, y'all. So y'all think she didn't feel some type of way about that? But the thing is, I'm letting her stay with me. Who, who, who cares what she thinks? She She's not paying the bills. I am. So your mama got to get out. Now, they was like, you going to put... You gonna put me out and these kids? You know what I'm saying? She she wanna be upset. Well, I don't wanna be here no way. That's fine. You, you should have no problem leaving then. So get out. All right. Now I don't care that this is your daughter. That means zero to me. Nobody gets to disrespect me in my own home. All right. Now, because she had those kids with her, she was thinking like a lot of women do. The kids can save her. But I was like, no, you gotta go. And you gotta go now. Well, I'm calling so I can get me a ride. Somebody going to pick me up. Oh, that's fine and good. But what they got to do with me? They got nothing to do with me. Telling me somebody's coming to get you don't mean squat to me. I told her she has to go now. All right? Now, if she didn't leave, it was going to get real rough for her because now I'm going to start to defend my home. Because now I got I got an intruder. I got a trespasser at that point. And I'm willing to treat you as a trespasser, if you know what I'm saying. OK, I ain't got no problem with that. Now, she accepted she got to get out now. So, you know what I'm saying? She put a coat on. It's like, you're going to let you going to let these kids uh, be outside. Like, no, the, the, the kids ain't did nothing wrong. They fine. The kids can stay. But she, of course, she wanted to take the kids with her. I say, well, the kids can stay. So whenever her brag get here, whatever's going on with that, the kids can go outside then. But right now she got to get out. She can't be here waiting on somebody to come get her. 
I don't care what's going on with you. You already crossed the line by even trying to be disrespectful toward me in my own home. So you got to rotate. It's that simple. Now, that's ruthless. And that's being nice. I let the little kids stay in the <laughs> in the home to be in the heat. But like I said, it was really cold outside. This is the day of the winter. You go outside and you stand outside, you twiddle your thumbs, you do whatever you got to do to go find some heat. Maybe you can go find a store that'll let you stand in a store while it's cold outside. I don't care what you got to do, but I know you can't stay here. Okay? I don't care your rhyme or reason. You can't stay here. And this is something that men don't even do enough. Okay, if someone gets upset, they get a problem with you, put them out. Okay, learn how to put a woman out of something. I, I've told y'all before, too, I've had women who got smart with me while they literally riding with me. I have pulled over and let them out only at the uh, because it's something my uh, my friend's mother told me to do, which I thought was great advice. And I do think other men should follow this advice. If a woman starts giving you a problem and y'all driving somewhere, man, look up the nearest police station and pull over and put out. You don't appreciate being in my car. You don't appreciate riding around with me because you talking crazy. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you talk crazy in somebody else's car. You can't be in my car talking crazy. You, I can't say you can't talk crazy. You can do it. You just can't be in my car talking crazy. So I know how to pull over and let you out. Now, why do I let, let him out at the police station? That's because because my friend and mother said, well, you know, well, what if something happens to a woman? You know what I'm saying? You the last guy that was with her. OK, cool. As a black man, I understand that that's a legitimate concern. I'm not taking you home. And see, a lot of us, we've been trained to take a woman home. I'm not mad at you if y'all have been doing this because I get it. That's our training. Take a woman home. No, I'm not taking you home. As soon as you cross me, that's as soon as you got to deal with the, deal with the, the the consequence of crossing me. Just is what it is. The only way you're not gonna have to deal with that consequence is if if I'm in a position that I can't immediately put consequences on you. That's the only way. But you start talking crazy to me, yeah. The old me would just pull over and let you get out wherever you at. Okay. <laughs> the new me, I'm gonna drop you off at the police station just cause. Hey, I don't want nothing coming back to me at the end of the day. But you got to go now. Okay? Now I'm not even going I'm not going to tell a woman that's what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? I've done that a couple times. I have not told a woman what I was doing. She just boom, we just pulled over at the police station, get out. Okay? Get out my car. And if she and that way you are in a position that if she won't get out your car, you can just walk into the police station and tell them I got somebody in my car. You know what I'm saying? We had a problem. I want her to get out of my car. And that's it. Ain't nothing they can do but put out the car at that point. Yeah, there's no they have no legal recourse but to put out your car. Because it's your car. And and at that point, she's a trespasser in your property. It is what it is. Okay. Uh shout out to Gilgami. He says, proper response at the Roger Report. It also teaches the children that a man rules his home and should not tolerate disrespect to look. And look for excuses to hide behind children. You know that's a good call. That's a good call, Gilgami. Because uh, those those kids would have to get that type of understanding from that situation. So that's a good call. Okay. And I'm not the type of guy. I'm not gonna put the little kids out in the cold and they ain't did nothing wrong. I I do get that, and I do believe that you know more than like she thought she had some leverage in that situation because she brought the kids up but i'm like no nah, the kids ain't got to go outside in the cold but you got to go now you, you see what i'm saying <laughs> it is what it is now with her daughter being there it just made it easier for her to to uh, lead the kids there but i would tell you this if if her daughter wasn't there if nobody was there besides me and her she still had to get out that moment now maybe she don't feel comfortable leaving the kids in the house with me until whoever comes to get her, get her. Maybe she don't feel comfortable. That's her problem. She chose to talk crazy at that moment. And that's the moment you're going to have to deal with the consequences. It just is what it is. All right. <laughs> and shout out to Sugar Bomb. She says, that ain't right. That ain't right, Roger. That's foul. Sugar Bomb, I don't know what's foul about it. The only thing I know that was foul is you tried to talk crazy to me in my own home. That That's just stupid if you ask me. You know, 
And, but see, that's something that people should recognize is just a stupid thing to do. One thing that I can literally say I've never done, I've never went to somebody else's home and tried to talk crazy to them. My parents at least raised me enough to have an understanding that it's just dumb to be talking crazy to people in their own home. Nor have I talked crazy to anybody if I was riding in their car. I've just never done that. Okay? I don't even know what's so important that I got to start have, talking crazy to somebody during a car ride. Now, I can understand maybe if you're doing a road trip or something like that, but what do you got to say that's that important that you got to get it out right now while you riding around in somebody else's vehicle? Okay? And, and keep in mind, this don't mean you don't have a vehicle. Y'all might be riding somewhere together because you're going to the same location. I get that all day. But what was so important that you had to say it while you're still in the car? That's just dumb to me. Okay? That's dumb to me. It don't make sense. But see, yeah, I was taught different things that I guess other people, there's some people who ain't been taught these things. Okay? Like, don't, you know, I was taught never to talk crazy to the driver. Because that's your ride home. You know? <laughs> Maybe other people didn't hear this type of stuff growing up. Okay? But at the end of the day, as a man, you have to learn how to hold a woman accountable no matter what the circumstances is and do not let them hide behind children. A lot of women have gotten away with a lot of stuff because they hide behind children. I don't allow women to hide behind children. Okay? So, for example, had that woman not left my home in the dead of women, when her talking about, well, I got these kids with me, I would have told her the kids don't have to leave, but you got to go now. Now, if she want to put the kids in the cold because she wants to uh, try to hide behind the kids or use the kids and say, well, well if, if you put me out, they got to come with me. Hey, that's on you at the end of the day. That ain't got nothing to do with me. All right. I would not tell a woman to put her kids in the cold. But if you put your kids in the cold, that is not my problem. And I'm not going to have a concern about it. All right. <laughs> Let's see what Doberman is saying here. He says, to Roger's point. A lot of the issues you will have as black men, domestic violence, baby trapping, divorce, etc., will come from overstaying your relationship with a bad woman. Kick her out, walk away. Hey, that is true, brother. That is true. <laughs> you know, and Sugar Bomb's starting to get it, y'all. She say, Roger, cold bloody. Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah, I am. All right. And there's nothing wrong with that. It, and being cold-blooded has helped a lot of people, all right? Rael says, unfortunately, many black children like those, Roger, were not born out of love, but for a welfare check. Most black born, excuse me, uh, uh, most, well, it's probably been black children. Most black children born after 1960 were born for a welfare check for a mama. I wouldn't argue that at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that at all. But see, the, the thing is, y'all, no matter what's going on with the woman, no matter what's in her heart, she has to learn to respect me and she has to learn to respect me immediately. Whether we are in a relationship or whether she's somebody who's not in a relationship with me, you got to respect me at all times. And if you don't respect me, that's fine. But you got to be OK with the consequences that come with not respecting me. All right. And there's going to be some women who are comfortable with the consequences. Because if you hold a standard as a man that one of the consequences for not respecting you is not to get to be around you, well, maybe she's comfortable with that. But let her go. Okay? Maybe she's comfortable, but let her go. And do not let her go when it's convenient for her. Learn to hold women accountable immediately. Okay? It needs to be something immediate. See, women will get into a situation and they'll cause trouble, especially when it comes to a relationship where they already going to start making plans to move on to somebody else. And by the time you really catch wind and want to address the situation, she already got somebody else in place. She already dated another. See, this is how a lot of guys get cheated on. They just, they, they overstay. They allow the woman to overstay her welcome. And a lot of people get cheated on just because you just let her stay too long. She has communicated to you that she don't see you as worth it for whatever reason. 
And I do understand that black women have this disdain for black men and they are white supremacists, so they're already looking at us in a certain context. I get all that is there. But if you let her stay there beyond her welcome and she starts cheating on you because you, you let this happen, at the end of the day, you could have held her accountable, but you didn't decide to. And and then you got cheated on. And now you may be feeling hurt or, or crushed because you got cheated on. You know, I've never known myself to be cheated on. I don't think it's happened to me. BGS say all women cheat, but and I'm about to give them bullshit, <laughs> no, Roger. <laughs> well, hey, they never let me know it. All the smart on that. Yeah, I'm smart on that. They're not supposed to let you know it. Yeah. But you got the flow, brother. How you doing? Okay. Why is it always black men that have this goddamn problem about accountability in their women? Nobody, no other group of women on the planet uh, can do, can even boast that. You can talk about that shit. Every other group of men on the planet hold their women accountable. How? What is it with black men that we can't? Well, uh, unfortunately, I, I think a lot of us, we just don't even understand what it looks like to, to actually be in a position to hold a woman accountable. You know, and we don't want to do it if we can. That that's why you have the statements that people was making earlier. You know, well, she always can find somebody else. Good. <laughs> so can you? You know, you know, you know, because they they keep throwing around this uh, this stat, right? A third of guys um, are vir- you know, a third of black men are virgins. They can't find no women. Bullshit. Okay. Four hundred dollars, you know, four five hundred dollars, a passport and a ticket. You can come back and bring you all the wives that you fucking want. Bullshit. But you know, BJ, uh, when a lot of when they do stats like that, and I'm not saying mm-hmm. the stats are wrong, but they do include it's, younger it's, people. Yeah, it's self-reported. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying though they include younger people too. So just like I said, my nephew, he didn't have sex since he was nineteen. That's not a, that's not lending to a problem. No. That's actually lending to a solution because kids shouldn't be having sex to their adults. And you know, you know so, adult, okay. The thing is, okay, you know what? I mean, you know, I get tired of this adult shit, right? You're a motherfucking adult when you get 16 years old. That's been the standard for a hundred thousand years. You're a fucking adult when you're 16. You go to Europe, you're an adult when you're 16. So in saying that you're 19, you're not a goddamn adult. You are an adult, okay? Uh, basically, men and women are, you know, if you go to any other country, men and women are actually uh, husband and wives. They're trained to be husband and wives when they get 15, 16 years old. It's bullshit. You're an adult. You're 19. You're an adult. No, no. I'm, I'm saying the 19-year-old is an adult, but I'm saying with, with, with a lot of those surveys, they start with 14, 15 years old if you check into the surveys. Yeah. So I get why you're going to have people who are still... No, no, no. What, what I'm saying is they they they, tra- they 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 trace this about... They talk about adult men, not talking about kids. Talk about adult men as millennials, okay? They're the voluntary. Trust and believe because uh, uh, Kevin doesn't talk about it when he did his... You know, started doing his work. He found that out that stat to be pretty close to accurate. Okay. They're, 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 they're emotionally and uh, socially delayed. So that's part of the reason. And I, I talked to too many of them. We go that are in college. Same shit. Okay. But anyway, that's beside the point. Yeah. But my thing is, those are still fairly young men at the end of the day. And I just from a from a um, you know what I'm saying because of how. The, uh, America is where you're not considered an adult to 18. Mm-hmm. My thing is they shouldn't be doing it until they're 18, at least 18 okay. anyway. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay, so, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they shouldn't. What I'm saying is is that but we're not talking about kids, okay? When they do those stats, they're, they're these stats that I'm reading and these stats I'm reading, we're talking about uh, people 18 and over. We're not talking about people 18 and under. Okay. These are the stats that I'm getting. Okay, so so basically, when it, you know, when I read a study, I read them very carefully. They're not talking about minors. Okay, They're talking okay. about adults. Minors are not adults. Okay, if you're under 18, you're a minor. You're not an adult. Absolutely. Okay? And that's this will be stats are based on. And, and, and I, I, all I'm saying is, mm-hmm. uh, even though you know you you will have something like that, you got to mm-hmm. look at that. You you got to look at the age because of the um. You know, you 18, 19, anything that's under 25, who who really cares that these guys haven't had sex? They're going to. They do. They're going to. Ha- <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, they do. <laughs> but they are going to have it, though. It's not like they, they're going to get locked out. Not in the black community. You're not going to get locked out. 
locked. Yeah, well, they're not locked. Okay, they're not locked. It, it's it's what thing is. What I'm trying to say it's it's a mental problem that they're having. It's a perception problem that they're having. You know, because I've talked to these guys. It's a perce- I talked to guys that were did didn't have sex till they were fucking twenty nine or thirty years old. Okay, this and this is more than one, but it's a perception problem. When I talk to them, do you have opportunities? Yes. How come you didn't seal the deal? Because it's a belief. You know, just like this responsibility shit is a belief. And she oh, said, yeah. well, if, well, she can go get somebody else. Who cares? Okay. You, you live in a country of 330 million people. There's plenty. And in, in, in 57% of them are women. Okay. And, and all I know is these women out here getting it in. So that's why I say, <laughs> that's what I'm saying that, you know, I, I haven't really could have no real concern of, of men being virgins because we got too many hoes out here. If, if you, if you don't want to be one, it's easy to get rid of that. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 the truth is, I know who cares what women look at us as, and that's what we got to stop. That's, what, that's what's wrong with the goddamn black. I've been saying this for a long time. Stop looking at yourself through the eyes of your women. Stop looking at yourself through the eyes of your mama. Yeah, and, and see, and my thing is, w- whether guys, uh, whether a guy has not had sex or not, doesn't mean anything to me because I don't measure men based on women. I measure women based on men, which is normal. And and unfortunately, in the black community, we don't understand that when it's us, that that's still supposed to be normal. We think we're supposed to look at at women and say, well, you know, this is a good man because he has X, Y and Z as his woman or he got mm-hmm. two or three women. It, I can't measure men by women. That's stupid. You know what I'm saying? Especially amongst black women, because black women go out their way to make stupid choices. So you know, no, a, a man that has two or three women, a man is, is supposedly a good man because he does X, Y, and Z. Who does that sound like? Does it sound like a man that sounds like what your women, what your women say? It, it's what the women say. Exactly. So you looking at yourself through the eyes of your women, and uh, so and I and I, I I hear that from guys all the time. Oh man, I can get bitches. Who cares whether you can get bitches or not? The only women, that, the only people that care about you getting bitches are the women because you're serving them. The thing is, that's how we can't hold them accountable. Every time you try to hold a woman accountable, you get some dude that's going to simp and come in, oh, man, it ain't their fault. they just women. It's on us. She, you know, I, sometimes I want to reach through the, 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 the <laughs> line and slap the crap out of them, man. Wake the fuck up. Anyway. Well, you know, that, that was a point I was actually going to bring up because there are guys who are going to say that women are doing this stuff because of what the men are doing. And what I need for men to understand is that's a coward talking. Okay, I don't care who it is Mm -hmm. or why they said it. If they are blaming men for how women act, they're a coward. Mm -hmm. They're just scared of women at the end of the day. Yeah, I I just heard a guy uh, on TikTok, actually on YouTube, saying it's it's uh, it's not the black woman's fault. It's the black man's fault. No, basically, you know what? We start holding children accountable for their actions if, if, when they if when they first learn to walk and grab stuff and break stuff right and mm-hmm. we we tap them on the hand and we give them a time out or however we decide to let them know that what they're doing is not okay right they're held accountable to the to the to the uh to the to the measure of their understanding right mm-hmm. From children on the, as kids right if you did something wrong and you knew it was wrong you got your ass beat okay Depending on what your how your parents punished you, you're held accountable. So say we can't hold hold grown ass people that have been trained and been socialized and have the same kind of education and upbringing that you have. You can't hold them accountable. Come on. What? Well, I think to me. No. <laughs> well, I'm in agreement, which is why I'm saying something about mm-hmm. it. You know, and, and my thing is that's why you're gonna have to learn to dump women, and you're gonna have to learn to start jumping on women's cases about the stuff they say that they do not carry out. If men could just do those two two things, we'll get so much progress. But I am trying to warn folks, it it can, it might, you might see it as somewhat frustrating in the beginning because when you start jumping on women about the stuff they say, they're not used to actually keeping their word. I promise you that. Mm. <laughs> they're not used to it. So they're going to have reactions. And the thing is, are you going to stand on your principle, even when she has her reaction. Because if she ain't going to do what I told her to do, she's going to get dropped. That's my thing. I guess she's going to have a reaction because I understand how society is. I'm going to let her have a reaction, 
But once she get through saying whatever she gonna say, you still gonna have the option of do what I say or get out. Yeah, well, you, it's called uh, having having boundaries and and having a standard. Except the woman back after she didn't violated your one of your boundaries, then you know what? And I've taken losses from very pretty, very beautiful women that I really loved. Okay, I said these are my deal breakers. Okay, and if you cross them, that means you don't care about me. And guess what I did? You know, I, I put her out, or I packed my shit and left. Hey, nothing, nothing wrong with that. And and we need a lot more brothers who are going to actually do that. Hey, and Roger, I, I told you it works. Oh, yeah. I, know, I, I totally agree. It, it works. But but that is how we train. And see, this is the thing. You can't be selfish. This, that's a, more of a selfless act because a lot of people, because they're trained to be selfish, and that's why you're concerned with what the woman going to do after she leave you. I know if I hold a woman accountable, when she meets the next man that she likes, she's going to think about what I was doing to her. And then she's going to act much better toward him because she's not going to want to lose him. You know, now it may not be a lot better. Maybe it's only 5, 10 percent. Maybe it's 15 percent. But she'll act better because she had an experience with me. And she found that I wasn't taking no crap at the end of the day. Now, if every man did that, eventually we can all really get to a woman that we like that's willing to follow our lead very easily. But the issue is we don't do it, but we use this excuse about what the next guy going to do. Well, she can find somebody else. That's something your mama trained you to think about. Okay? You as a man, you're the leader. You protect and provide for those you lead. If she ain't your woman, you don't owe her protection. You don't owe her provision and you don't owe her leadership. So what does it make matter that some other man is going to meet her? And 99% of the time, you wasn't her first man anyway. <laughs> you, find, you found her, right? She found you and you wasn't the first man. So if, when she leaves you, of course, she's going to find another man. You're not, you know, they didn't stop making men when, uh, uh, when they made you. You know, you weren't the mold. OK, there's plenty of men just like you competed for her. And there's other men vying for her attention. There's going to be men after you. Yeah. But but y'all really should ask yourself, why do I care what she's going to do after I'm gone? You know what I'm saying? You, you That's something every man needs to ask himself that has ever thought about something like that. Why do you care what she's going to do after your relationship is over? Why does that make a difference to you? Because it, it has never made a difference to me. OK, I'm not concerned with what women are doing, period. And I'm not going to even uh, I'm not going to allow women to mess up nothing with me, man, even my friends. You know what I'm saying? Not that I think my friends would do it. But if my if, if I had an ex that came on to my friend, my friend is going to tell me and I'm probably going to tell him, go on, hit it, bro, because she's yeah. just trying to be a hoe to hurt me. So you might as well get the sex out the deal. Yeah, you might as well. I mean, you, she hit on my once she hit on my friend and I know about it, basically, OK? Okay, you're not my woman no more. Well, I'm saying even after you've br broken up, because oh, guys, sure. I worry about what, what they're gonna do. Who cares? After. What yeah. I'm saying that the guys do care. That's why they they make. I mean, hell, hell, if you want to, I'll pass her on to you. If I'm done with her. Well, I'm, I'm saying though, you know, guys make that statement about well, you know, she gonna meet somebody else. That's them admit they care what that woman does well, after what, your relationship. Well, well, then, well, then, well, then you shouldn't let her go. If you really care that much, you shouldn't have let her go in the first place. If you care that much about what she does after you, you shouldn't let her go. Stay, uh, stay, stay, stay and put up with the bullshit. Stop, stop fronting. If you really care. In fact, you know what? You know, this is funny. I'm telling you, this is a funny story, right? My fiance, man, we were living together. She's talking shit about there's other guys out there. He said, you know what? If you think you find a better man, I'll help you. I'll help you find a dude so you can be happy. I'll help you. Her mouth dropped open. You think I care? If, you, if, if you're not right for me, you don't think I'm right for you, I'll help you find the next dude. And then I'll move on. Yeah, that, 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 that's going on. <laughs> what oh, that kind of duty? <laughs> huh? Say what? That's what I hope you. Well, that shows you that this shows them how how committed I am. If you're not right for me, if you're not right for me, we're not together. That's how much I care about our relationship, right? I don't care. I'll help you find the next dude, and then I'll move on. Mm, mm. Absolutely, absolutely. If you, if you if you're not committed, you're not on my program. You're not down for me. Move. Go. 
If you yo, you need help? No. Okay, you need help packing? Okay, I'll help you do that. You need help finding? You can't find a dude to move on? Come on, let's go out. Here, he's he's right for you. I know him. Pick him. Go with him. He'll he'll, he'll take care of you. And and shout out to to. Um, <laughs> I'm glad this first time I've seen his name, but shout out to his brother, <laughs> not a baby daddy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that sizable cash out, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, not a baby daddy, 150. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you very much. You'll definitely be the sponsor of tomorrow's show. <laughs> just for that. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying, you know what? And, and you know, I've been I've been said that I have a pimp mentality. Okay, you you know if you're useful to me, you're useful to me. If I'm useful to you, it's an exchange, right? If 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 the contract is broken, I'm no longer part of the exchange. Okay, move on. Okay, we're not right. It, the fit's not right. Um, if you're working for me, and we you decided you don't you you quit, you go working for the guy across the street. Good on you. Okay, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. You did what's right for you. Go on and do that. So, but don't come back. You know, don't come over here talking shit. Okay. Hey, you found you found a good fit. Be happy. I'm happy for you. Now I need to go find me another employee. Absolutely, and and that's the mentality that a lot of black men really need to grasp on to. And uh, and guys, we're not going to be trained this way in the home because a lot of us are being raised by women. Why would women tell us this type of stuff? So I know some people got to think, what well, does this really make sense or not? And I'm saying this because I don't know who's going to be the guy. This is the first time they heard one of these shows. It's your first day here, whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get you're going to have that concept. Does this make sense or not? Why doesn't it make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. A relationship, the, the standard of relationship is men. See, I, mm -hmm. I don't play these games about there's problems on both sides. No, there's not a problem on both sides. A woman can get a man she likes. And if she don't really like the man, she should be done with that man within three months, period. Yeah. But once you have these extended situations and anything beyond, especially I would say six months is an extended situation for a mm. woman because a woman only got so much time. 30 coming around the corner. OK, you 18, you go to sleep real good. You're going to wake up. You're going to be about 23 already. OK. You, know <laughs> you have uh -huh. another good sleep. You're going to be about 27. OK. 30 coming around the corner. Okay. So there is no excuse for a woman to not go after the man she wants, period. So once you once you're with the man, that's your fault if it's beyond six months. I don't yeah, even well, play these games with women. We, women we, always women will always go after the man they want. The thing is, uh they they can't always get the man that they want. Well, I mean, that's just tough though. You know what I'm saying? It is tough. Well, that's just the nature of things, man. That's why, you know, when people talk about Stefco, okay, you're going after the man. You have to go about, you know, there's one, you can go after uh, any person that you want, okay? That doesn't mean that you have enough cachet to actually get that person that you want. And if you don't, you then you got to do what? Your pockets say you got to settle. You got to get what you can afford. Same thing with women. You got, they have to get the man they can afford. If you can't afford it, then hey, this, that's not for you. Everybody wants to master the universe that's six foot two and, you know, and, and, and got uh, got 23 inch arms and got, you know, 200 grand uh, as a salary. OK, mm -hmm. everybody wants that. Everyone wants that. But do you have enough in your pocket? Do you have enough beauty, uh, beauty and education and whatever that it takes to get that dude to get it? No, you don't. I want to well, hear it. I wanted to play for the Bulls. <laughs> yeah, I want to play for the Lakers. So what? <laughs> I, you know, I, 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 I was about six, seven inches too short. Okay. <laughs> well, I wasn't nowhere near playing. I wanted to play for the Rockets, but that wasn't gonna never happen. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just saying, people. Yeah, people got to get get over what they ain't gonna get. It just, it just, there is a reality out here that you have to deal with as a person. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a kid from Chicago. I literally did want to play for the Bulls. Mm -hmm. it, you know what I'm saying? They wouldn't invite me to a camp. Okay, <laughs> so you're not gonna get everything you want. But see, uh, I, my thing is, men, we do actually have to learn how to start holding these women accountable. You got to jump on them about the stuff that they saying they gonna do that they don't do, even though they have a convenient reason for not doing it. You can't accept this type of stuff. You got to stay on their case about anything that they that they say to you 
that they're actually going to do because you're training a woman to respect you. Yeah, they, they've already been untrained. They, well, they've already been trained to not respect you. Okay, you have to train them to respect. They have to train them to do nothing. Either they do or they don't. Either they do or they don't. You ain't got to train them to do shit. You don't respect me, bye. Yep. You ain't got to train well, to do I shit. I mean, that, that, that's yeah. what the I mean. Only, the only person you have to train to respect you is either the, either the woman in your house or your child. That's it. Everybody well, else well, don't count. Either they, well, they, they walk in and respect you or they or they or they're not part of your life, period. Well, that's what I mean by uh, making sure you tell her to do whatever she says she's going to do. You know what I'm saying? Okay. To, yeah. to, I'm looking at that as, as some training. She told you something for convenience mm -hmm. of that particular moment, but yeah. I'm going to make you actually do what you said. Now, you it, told me you was going to do X, Y, Z. Get up and do it. And if she ain't going to do it, now you got that, the role. That's, I, that's, 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 that's my child, right? Because I mean, I'm just going to look. I might not even say anything the first three times, okay? You, you, you said you're going to do something. You didn't do it. I might remind you. I might not, right? And I see that you didn't do it. Okay, you're not the woman for me, okay? You, you, your mama didn't train you, right? And so I'm going to throw you back into the lot. Yep. Yep. That's it. I mean, you, you, you're on, basically, you, you're, you know, dating is an audition. Dating's mm -hmm. an audition. You know, you're just like uh, you're a rapper. You've been in entertainment, right? When you go to the record label or whatever it is, you drop your mixtape. That's your audition, right? Absolutely. And so what happens when they don't like you? They don't call you, right? <laughs> right. Don't, don't call, call us, we'll call you. you don't yeah, we'll call you. Okay. You didn't make you didn't make the cut, son. All right. No harm, no foul. You just been dropped like a hot potato. You've been dropped like a hot potato, man. <laughs> What's going on, A B? How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm I'm doing all right. Just got done planting some trees. Salute, A B salute. Yes, salute, BGS, master educator, salute. Yeah, this got done watching BGS videos. God damn, that's a classic. No. <laughs> that, 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 that one, you, oh, oh my gosh, I'm like, dang. I I was, they might I was take that one down, but that was, that was brutal. I, I, was, I was pissed, but you know, it, it is what it is, man. You know, yeah. if, for anybody here at the end of the, end of the video, I ended with lead, follow, get the fuck out of the way. There's only there's only there's only three spots for you, okay? Either you, either you lead and you take care of what you know my needs and whatever yeah, needs I need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, either you do that, yeah, yeah. you do that, yeah. and you pay the cost to be the boss, and you take care of me or whatever I need to the, to 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 the best of your ability, and I accept it. Or you get you get behind me and get on my program and follow, okay? If you can't do any one of those two things, get the fuck out of the way. Go find somebody else. Those are only three spots, and a lot of, and we we let black women stay in that limbo, okay? Yeah, they they yeah. don't want to lead. They they complain about following. Blah, blah. I don't need you, okay? Those are only three spots. It's like Roger. Roger only has one spot for you. You follow, or you or you bounce. <laughs> that's that's the truth. <laughs> Roger, go, I'm 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 flexible, okay? I, whatever works, I'm for whatever works. I get a smart mm -hmm. chick. If I get a o Oprah to come in, it's gonna change my life, and she's gonna pay the cost to be the boss, and she's gonna take care of my needs. You know what? I'm gonna let you lead, baby. You're gonna lead because guess what? You have proven that you can, and you paying the cost to be the boss, right? If you can't do that, you need to follow. Mm -hmm. Can't do one of those two. Then, then, then you, there's no spots for you. You need to go someplace else. Yeah. And I will say I, I'm I'm one dimensional in, in that co context because I don't know of women who gonna take care of a man until he dies. And until I started seeing, oh, some, I seen it. Oh, I seen it. I, seen I ain't never seen. Yeah, it. Oh, it's, 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 I seen a lot of them. Just, you just don't hang rare. around them people, but yeah, I seen a lot of them. Yeah, it's rare. It's, it's rare. It's not rare. <laughs> you think it's rare? It's not that rare. Well, may maybe it's out there in California, <laughs> but I don't live in California. So with, with me, is I'm, I'm just gonna keep it real. And I've said this before. I simply don't trust a woman that much. I don't trust no woman to come in yeah. and take care of me and mm -hmm. and be okay and be a good leader or anything like that. I don't trust none of them that much. It, that's mm -hmm. just keeping it real. Even the dudes that get taken care of don't trust them that much either. That's how come they have an exit plan. Right. Well, they, I don't blame. <laughs> so at the end of the day, she's going to have to follow. If she, and since I'm going to pay the cost to be the boss, mm -hmm. to me, there's not much to talk about. And I think men need to really start looking at relationships in that context. Mm -hmm. We we look so much of, a, you know, because women try to use a lot of little slick stuff. Well, we're going to be partners. Mm -hmm. 
I don't even let them use that language with me. You, we're not going to be partners because we're not equals in this. At the end of at the end of the day, I'm gonna end up taking care of you. You're not gonna end up taking care of me. That is the reality that we're dealing with. So we're gonna approach the whole relationship that way. We, I'm not approaching anything as a partner. To me, if you want a partner, that's something that the LGBT community does. Yeah, you probably should move in that direction. Yeah, that's my advice for anybody who wants a partner. Man, be, be quiet as kept. There's a whole lot of white women that the feminists are doing the same shit. Man, they got house husbands. So. They, but you don't see them uh, actually out there proclaiming it. They got them. They got them. It's, it's going to come out eventually. And it's, <laughs> and it's going to really be known. Marcy eventually. Darcy's out there? <laughs> hmm? I'm just saying. Say what? So, you, so you're saying there's a lot of Marcy Darcy's out there? Yeah. Bunch of them. Bunch of them. You know, basically, you you a uh, PhD and and uh, you can't find no man. You don't want to be alone. You want a family. Then you're going to have to... Uh, then you're gonna have to assume uh, the role of uh, breadwinner. Breadwinner, yeah, is what it is. So, I mean that that's the way you setting up the society where uh, where women are taking those uh, breadwinning jobs this is what it is. So that's that's the that's the end game. Okay, uh, if the feminists have said it. Okay, you got to shut the fuck up and be a breadwinner if you want this spot because this is what we push for. We push for this. We 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 fought forty years for this. We've been fighting tooth and nail to get these positions. And if you don't, if if uh if if you don't uh, accept these guys uh, as supported as with as supportive males, because I've I've seen them uh, talking about Kentaji Brown's uh, husband. Okay, the supportive male crew in Washington D.C. So that so that so if you think that I'm, that language is not uh is not real, okay, go read, okay. Because this is straight out of the feminist playbook, okay? Supportive male. That's what they call them. They don't call them house, they call them supportive males. Okay. The, the, the language is definitely there, but I would say yesterday I just happened to see something small. It was on TikTok. Mm -hmm. It was like two guys, I think it was, talking mm -hmm. to <laughs> they was talking to a woman. Mm -hmm. And they, they literally said something about like her being like the breadwoman or the leader. Mm -hmm. Would you be like comfortable with a man who who's not making as much as you? And she was mm -hmm. like, Well, um, she, she, I would be okay. Well, no, they, they said something about her being a household. They literally said household. You know, yeah. you don't see any masculinity in, in like a household. And she was like, "Well, you know what? It's like, uh, I'm, I'm I'm not into the gender roles, but I don't want a woman." And they started laughing, like, you know, what I'm saying, you just said you're not into gender roles, but you literally calling the man a woman mm -hmm. if he's a household. Yeah. So yeah. I know, you know, what I'm saying that is how most women react react to this type yes, of they stuff. Do. They so, do. They for me, it's not even the card I'm gonna put on the table. But then, okay, Roger. Regardless, we're not talking about you. We're talking about the society as as they're building it. Okay, they're building this into the, the fabric of society. This is gonna happen, or the shit's gonna fall apart. And most likely, it's gonna fall apart. Well, I'm I'm with it falling apart. Then <laughs> that 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 seems we like all we we always say that. Okay, we always say that until uh, until the uh, what's called the purge becomes an everyday occurrence. Yeah, then we don't really say that. Anymore. Nah, I, I I get that. Were, you know what I'm saying? What my thing is when it when it comes down to it, most women, from what I've seen, mm -hmm. cannot handle being in that leadership role. That the man normally takes, and they, unless they can handle it, there's no reason for they, them to be in that spot. They're they, they, they gonna have to handle it. They, they, there's two, there's two things you know, with this feminist wave that they're pushing, right? Especially as they get past thirty, okay? Now, the one or two things that you're gonna have to be a breadwinner, you have to uh, buy a dog and die alone. Choice is yours. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, then it, it should be a great. I start selling dogs if necessary. Yeah, you, 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 every time you see one of these chicks, guess what's behind them? Is it either a cat or a dog? Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. That, that I'm fine with that. I, I BJS, I, I said the other day, we're gonna get to a point where you're gonna start having 85 year old women at the grocery stores that they ain't got no kids, or mm -hmm. if they got kids, they kids don't mess with them like that, and they're gonna to the, die now, folks. Get to the point, you're already there, sir. Ain't no get to the point. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it'll be more on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? Kev, uh, Kevin yeah. had a seven year, seventy one year old. What is it? Uh, 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 what is it? A uh, uh, woman that never been married, never had kids. Seventy one. I believe it. if she, 
was if she refuses to be under male leadership, that should happen to him. That yeah. that's my stance. Any woman who refuses to be under male leadership, she should have problems, and I'm okay with them having problems. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's that's my that, stance. That's, on. that's a choice. Okay, yeah. that's a choice. Live I respect. It. I respect women's ability to have problems. You know, <laughs> and shout out to Timmy Fields for the super chat. Thank you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. But uh, Raya, I'll let you get the flow since you didn't came up. Uh, peace, Raya. Peace to the panel. Uh, peace to the chat. Um, I wanted to. Um, um, I think this is a critical um as i was talking about earlier um um uh, the cultural uh, uh or incompetency um practiced by um the women does not um it does not afford black men um uh, the cooperation needed to even see whether the men are capable of actually being leaders even though historically black men, despite the adverse conditions black men have had to operate uh, in this country uh, since it was constituted, um, has shown leadership from a collective standpoint. Um, many of the uh, men that uh, women complain about um, are female raised men, they're not men raised by men. Um, if, 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 if anybody's in here old enough, that's listening, <clears throat> when we were younger, um, when we, you know, were around people like our grandfathers or great grandfathers and uncles and things like that, um, they had a different disposition, um, uh, because those men came from a time where they were, they had honcho in the house, like their, their, their word was law in the house. The women acquiesced to that and they followed that leadership. There was no question about, you know, who, who is the leader. Um, um, you start getting into the feminism aspect and the, and the welfare. Um, you combine those two I and mean, you have a, you're dealing with a different type of setup. Um, but I wanted to um, ad address this from a psychology perspective, perspective, like I, I like to do. Um, first, I want to read the definition of CPTSD, which is uh, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, it's, it's a condition where you experience some symptoms of PTSD along with some additional symptoms, such as difficulty controlling your emotions, feeling very angry or distrustful towards the world. I think that's very important as we relate this towards the men, because we see a lot of men who do have a fear um, and, uh, uh, of the world in terms of going out there and uh, uh, conquering it in the way that men are supposed to. Um, primarily, that's due to the women. Uh, men typically are not raising men to be scared of the world. We've shown this through different organizations and the rites of passages that we've had historically. Um, things like the Boy Scouts and things like that, when, when they were set up and they weren't uh, as corrupt as they have uh, gotten, uh, were very instrumental in introducing men um, to the uh, young men to the world uh, to, 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 to not be in fear of it. Um, this is from a, um, a book called um, Narcissistic Mothers, How to Handle a Narcissistic Parent and Recover from CPTSD. This particular section specifically is called Narcissistic Mothers and Their Sons. And I want to read some of this because I think it, it, it really does uh, 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 encapsulate um, some of the things that we're talking about as it relates to the men, their fear of the environment and their... Um, um, the, the, when you have men that... It, I have a um, I have a I have a homegirl who, who who made this statement about four or five years ago, and I, I liked it. I, I always thought it was a great statement. She says she gets tired of offering a solution, um, um, no, she gets tired of people offering her a problem for every solution she gives them. 
Um, and you have many um, men up here um, who have adopted this mentality um, from, from their actual mothers. Um, constantly looking at the world as uh, a scary place. Um, when you show them opportunities, uh, it's, it's always, well, what about this? What about that? Uh, shout out to uh, City, and he had a video uh, a few years ago uh, called, about, uh, called What About Is? Um, the author says, <clears throat> the relationship that a man has with his mother is as complicated just as a relationship with a daughter and her mother. I think that what will happen is as we move forward more and more, men are going to have to face what is at the root of some of the things that they're struggling with. A narcissistic mom is someone who is not capable of attuning herself to her children. So her children are like things she owns for property. So there's no maternal instinct there. Uh, that's, that's what they will call maternal deprivation. Um, a first specific area of the relationship between the male child and the narcissistic mother is her behavior with all the people who have a relationship with her son. The overt narcissistic mother is aggressive, abrasive, and intolerant. For her, everybody else is an asshole. Everybody else is stupid, especially other women, which is ironic because you have so many women out here who are so quick to defend women. But when you have women like this, they view other women <laughs> as stupid. Uh, and assholes and ultimately enemies. Um, so it's a little bit easier to see that this person is narcissistic, but you could have narcissistic moms who are not so easy to spot. A covert narcissistic mother can come off like she actually cares about her son, and you might not be able to witness or understand that there is a dependency that's being fostered, um, which is what a lot of uh, psychologists will, will call uh, emotional incest. In both situations, overt and covert, narcissistic mothers are using their sons for a source of supply. There is an investment happening. There is an unconscious desire to consume the son and to create a dependency that always provides a source of supply. The son never has the ability to go out and become a separate individual from his mother. A narcissistic mother's agenda is to make sure that she's number one to ensure that this young man never goes out and needs her. This is why I have been co consistently saying in this space, many, many of y'all and, and women too, I've mostly been speaking to the women, but many men too, you gotta believe your mom, man. It, I don't care if that means she's gonna just be out there. That's on her because of this type of treatment. Um, so other women are considered a threat. She'll also consider his friends a threat. And she'll find something wrong with every person that her son brings in her house. She'll have a problem with his friend's mothers or his friend's fathers. And she'll have a problem with every teacher her son has. Another big trouble is the relationship with her husband, the father of her son. Now, this is critical. Often a narcissistic mom has married a very codependent man. She puts him down in front of the children and makes fun of him sexually. Lots of men have witnessed how their narcissistic mothers have battered their fathers, including stepfathers, in front of them, perhaps not in front of the neighbors and other family members, but behind doors, definitely. This is the kind of chaos that happens when you have a narcissistic mother and a father who is codependent and has been emasculated and constantly beaten down. If you're the son of this couple, you probably have no idea how to go up against this type of personality. You are being abandoned emotionally by this man who has just run out of steam. He goes to work, comes home to be criticized, and has to sleep on the couch. Nothing he does is ever good enough. There's always something to complain about. And so this man, who should be teaching you how to stand up for yourself and not be abused, has abandoned you. On the flip side of the coin, this is your father whom your mother, your, whom your mom is putting down, and you don't realize that what she's doing is conditioning you to be afraid to be like him. She's trying to make sure that you feel dependent upon her and obligated to her and you have the feeling of disappointment. She's trying to find a way to make sure that you don't do to her what your dad has done to her, which is abandon her because that's the way she sees it. So many, many of us have heard these women out here talk about, when you hear women complaining about these men don't take care of the kids. That's not what they're really saying. What they're really saying is that man abandoned me. 
the, the child don't even factor in. The child is just being used. The, the innocence of the child is being used to graft onto the mom so she can get sympathy. She don't give a shit about the kids. Because if she gave a crap about the kids, she would she would have treated that man better. So when a lot of times when black men leave, this is the reason why they're leaving, because they're dealing with women like this. And just because they have a child by this woman, that doesn't mean they're obligated to stay and put up with this type of bullshit. Um, mom needs to believe that her son has put her in the center of his life. Um, if you kind of want to see an example of this uh, played out, um, if you don't want to read the book, you can watch the movie Hamlet. Uh, Hamlet is a great uh, depiction of this uh, concept. Therefore, the son of a narcissistic mother is terrified, living in a state of survival. There's also the loss of the self, and this is a problem in terms of emotional development. The young boy is not permitted to feel free enough to explore his environment without fear. And so there's a lot of insecurity in the young boy who has a narcissistic mom, and that carries over to adolescence when this young man wants to bring home a date. The mom will find a problem with the date and will actually gaslight the date, creating a lot of problems. The son will get the message that the mom is not happy that he brought the girl home. Statements like, quote unquote, that girl only wants you for your money, that girl is going to come out and get pregnant by you, or you're going to have to support her and some kid for the rest of your life will be floated around. You could be 12, and that's the kind of crap that your mother would be telling you, so you're getting the message. It also happens that the narcissistic, narcissistic mother would always play sick the minute her son wants to go out to play baseball or tell her he has a girlfriend. Mommy would get sick and the boy would have to abandon everything and prove to his mother that she is number one in his life. And this just gets repeated over and over. There, there's a lot of fear disappointing mom. You feel obligated to put her needs first. And when you're focusing on trying to please mom, you're losing yourself. When this becomes an issue for you, you don't have the ability to connect to it. So you have, you feel like you have low self-esteem and lack an identity. Now, when you're around other people, you feel insecure, you have anxiety, but it's absolutely not your fault. I'll just step it right there. I mean, uh, needless to say, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a mouthful. Um, On both sides of the equation, on both sides of the equation, um, the daughters and the sons, and I've said this before on here, if, 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 the, if the females can recognize that the males have been ruined, uh, injured emotionally, just like they have been injured emotionally from these kinds of moms, they can actually turn around much of the dysfunction that's out here. But that will mean you would have to do something that's brave. And that means you would have to stand up to your mom. In my experience, from what I've seen from black females, that is something that m most will, they just won't do. Many of them won't do it because their mom see them as an extension of themselves. They're not a separate being from their mom. And in order for you to fully be an adult, you have to become that. That the mother's teaching is supposed to teach you as a woman how to become separate from her and autonomous. She's supposed to teach you in the ways to raise you to be a wife so you can be with a man. If she's not giving you that type of teaching, she's ruining you. And she's ruining you, even if it means it's for her own benefit. And so what we can see here reading, the, uh, listening to this is that black men are, many black men are dealing with things that center around mental health, primarily because it's coming through their experiences with their mother. And then when they become adults, it just keeps playing out like a, a broken record over and over again because they haven't addressed the particular issue at some point no, no i'm i'm not even one of these people that's here shaming any men or women who have had these types of experiences with their mom because it's a real experience because children typically love their parents especially mom unconditionally 
But the problem is many of your moms don't love you unconditionally, which is what she's supposed to do. And what ends up happening is many black sons and daughters end up playing the parent role to their mom, which is obviously inappropriate. You keep sacrificing because mom is in need. Well, the reason why mom is in need because mom keep doing stupid shit and running men away. That's not your concern. That is not on you. She is a, her own individual being. And if she doesn't have the tools to keep men around, that's on her. Because when they was raising you and whooping your ass when you did something wrong, they expected you to know when you was a kid. So if they expect you to know as a kid how to do better, then you can have the expectation as an adult that's probably 20 years older than you than or more. They should know how to do better as well. I'll leave it there. Well, that's a very good point. And, and I think that, uh, you know, one of the ways that we as men can help women, we can start holding the women accountable. We can make them much more comfortable at holding the women accountable, even though them not doing is their own fault. And we got to stop having this thing about what we do as men somehow alleviates women's responsibility. Now, we all got to deal with, with uh, well, for the people who apply to, once you're grown, you got to understand your place as an adult and how to function with your parents. My parents don't look at me to do anything for them. Okay? I'm, I'm just keeping it real. That's not the way I was raised. I, everything goes forward in my family. It doesn't go backwards. So my mama don't look for me to help her. If something come up and she need my help, she'll ask. If I can do it, I do it. If I can't, I don't. It's that simple. But there's no expectation that I have to do anything for. It, it That don't exist in my family. Same thing with my father. There's no expectation that I have to do anything for him. Now, if they get older and get to the point where they can't move around and things like that, of course, me and my brothers and sisters, we're going to look out for them because they was great to us. Now, some women ain't going to have that because they were kind of crappy to their <laughs> to their children. And I do believe that if your parents treated you horribly, yes, you can forgive them. But that don't mean you owe them because eventually they are going to be older people. And some of our parents will deal with the fact that they can't get around on their own. That's on them. If, if, if you if you put yourself in a position where you isolated yourself from all your friends and family, I just look at it as tough. That's for you to get. You got to live with that. I don't have to live with that. So that don't bother me. You know, now, luckily, my parents didn't do that. But if they would have done that, trust me, I would just ignore. Them. It just is what it is. I can forgive you, but I can also ignore you, too. OK. Well, well I want to put this in here, too. Um, from the conversation that I've had with some 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 uh, women from the continent, many many uh, well, a few of them have said that um, one in particular who was actually married to an Eidos man said that much of her friends were married to black men from America, and she said that all her friends that had husbands from a, black men from america she said all of them had problems with black men's mothers this one particular just one particular female i'm talking about she literally said that this 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 brother's mom told him that he shouldn't have a beautiful wife as beautiful as this woman was his own mother and she said she ended up divorcing him. If you saw how this woman looked, you'd have been like, damn, because she was bad. And so dude was in his 40s and still playing the son-husband role to his mom. And I try to tell men, you know, at the end of the day, once you become an adult, <laughs> you know, you need a wife more than you need a mother. <laughs> so, you know, um, but so many black males have been traumatized. That's why I love Hamlet, because it shows you that even a, an adult son can be traumatized to a point that <laughs> he loses it, you know, 
And we can't take that lightly. I think a lot of times we take things lightly when it comes when it affects black men because we have this idea that black men or well, because black men are physically stronger, that means that by definition, black men should be emotionally stronger. That's not fucking true. That's absolutely false. First of all, we don't even need a society where men in general are walking around like robots hard as hell. Like, we don't need that. We need balance. You know, we need men, you know, um, you know, like I told a chick I was with years ago, I said, I'm, I'm balanced as a man. I'm aggressive when I need to be aggressive, but I'm compassionate when I need to be compassionate too. It just, the moment will dictate that. I'm not going to be all hard. And I'm not going to be all compassionate. I'm going to be a balance of the both. And so, but in order to do that, you have to have a group of women who are compassionate enough, who are empathetic to when you are, when you go to that compassion side or the soft side, they're not going to say you're being a bitch because you're being a balanced human being. And what we're seeing is, is that we, many, many of us, and uh, our mothers were not balanced. They, 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 they had children, but they were not mothers. That's a big difference. I, I, I say it all the time. There's a difference between a mother and just a bitch who has some kids. Uh, any, any chick can have a dude roll up on it and skeet in and get some baby. That don't make her a mother. <laughs> you know, I mean, she just has some kids. But being a mother is a role. And one of the most important things uh, that a mother is supposed to teach her children, whether sons or daughters, um, is to be emotionally intelligent, to be in tune with their emotions in a healthy way. That's what mothers are supposed to teach. And, they, and they're supposed to show that through their actions. That's not what black mothers typically have been doing for the past 60 years. Uh, most, most of these mothers have been more like uh, authoritarians doling out punishment and penalties because her needs are not being served it's not about her need it's about it should be about the family's need so when a woman is approaching approaching her life and her life decisions from a broken family model clearly she don't give a damn about even the, the members in her broken family because she don't care she's all about herself so many of the women are going to have to look at black men from an emotion from an emotional standpoint and have some 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 um what, what's the word i'm using uh, i want to use some uh some some empathy and some compassion especially if you want black men to have empathy and compassion for you it can't be one-sided and that's the that's the point that we we have to hit like we know on both sides i can admit like i have seen black you know females be com treated like complete crap by their moms and have tried to defend them against that. So, because I was compassionate for him, but these same women need to be the same way towards black men when they see it happen, when it's done to them as well. Well, I, I think a, a lot of that is because we as black men are not trained to go after them. And that's why I push that you really have to be a Rufus Nice guy. We live in a society where they, we know uh, the society only let them get away with a lot of stuff when it comes to non black people. We already know this. It's not information we got to look to find out. Other people are going to let them get away with stuff. So we have to hold them accountable when we're involved, just like we hold everybody else, you know, in society accountable. And you should hold them to the same level of accountability that society does black men. That's why you're going to have to start suing people. Now, I heard some of that stuff about even with the like uh, the case with Tory Lanez and uh, Meg Thee Stallion. And, and from based on what the little bit I did here, it seems like Tory name is being clear to a certain certain degree. Now, once his situation is over with Meg the Stallion, Tory should just go ahead and sue her. Why? Not because he need the money, because it's to set the precedent that stop playing with me just because I'm a black man. That's what people need to do. You have to go after people. I know it may make people cringe a little bit sometimes when I say folks. That when I'm dealing with stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, I go after people. Somebody bothers me somewhere. I'm trying to talk to somebody's supervisor, boss, or whatever, and I'm doing whatever I can to get them reprimanded, even up to the point of being fired. It doesn't make me no difference. 
you have we have to make it where black women are uncomfortable mistreating us the same way you got to make it uncomfortable for anybody else to mistreat us i think that's what we need to do but the thing is again we don't really have an idea of what what is the picture of holding a black woman accountable if you my mama and i'm an adult you don't have the same rule you used to have when i was a child every person made to tell your mama that you just you all you can do at this point is just advise me because i'm grown you know what i'm saying and that's that's for grown people if you still living with your mama that's different but if you out your mama's house and you somewhere on your own and you taking care of yourself you grown mama don't have control no more mama can give you suggestions mama can give you advice that's what she should do if she's a mother if she thinks there's something she should give you advice on but she got to accept it's your right to either take that advice or ignore that advice because you're grown but i think a lot of us are unwilling to do that which creates the climate that women feel comfortable doing nonsense when it comes to us we just got to make them feel uncomfortable you're not going to stop it immediately it's going to be a process but you got to start going after people you know why won't we do certain things we know if we do certain things they coming after us you know as a, as a black man you ain't gonna just walk down the street with a pipe and just start busting people across the head you know the police coming after you somebody gonna call and they're gonna be on you like white on rice so even if you thought it was a good idea you ain't gonna do it you know now are there some rebellious people out there sure but that's a small percentage at the end of the day most people are not going to do stuff that they know people are going to come after them over. So we simply need to start going after sisters, regardless of their connection to us. If this is your own mother, if this is your actual sister, like your blood relative sister, if this is, uh, you know, some woman you work with, some woman you just met, whatever the case is, you're going to have to go after people sometime. I know it can be time consuming. So I'm not saying you got to do it every single time. But if ain't nobody doing it none of the time, there's no reason for them to act better. They're going to have to be made to act better sometime. Well, they they got to know that it's a good idea for them to simply be better. You know, which is why I personally have broken up with so many women. They didn't understand the opportunity they had in front of me. And every man needs to see himself as an opportunity. Unless you're going to be one of those men who are going to depend on some woman to take care of you. Now, if that's the one... <laughs> If y'all gonna be that man, and now again, you gotta accept everything that come with that. So all the mistreatment that women do when it comes to those particular type of men, all the the attempts to emasculate that type of man, you know, hitting on the guy, uh, talking to him like he a child, like you gotta take all that to come with it. Which is why I don't even sign up for something like that. I don't trust no woman to take care of me. I know I'll take care of her, but I don't trust none of them to take care of me. Just is what it is. That shit been sale. All right. So at the end of the day, you're you going to have to make your choice. And you also need to require a woman to be fixed when you meet her. You know, because pe people talk about the mental health things. Okay. I'm not dating no woman who ain't mentally healthy. And you not being mentally healthy ain't got nothing to do with me. And, and because you not being mentally healthy has zero to do with me. I'm requiring you to be healthy from Jump Street. If you're not going to be healthy from Jump Street, you're going to get the boot quick with me. It just is what it is. You, you know what, y'all? Um, I'm going to have to get up out of here. I actually got to make it to a family event. So I'm going to have to end Enjoy. a little bit early. Enjoy that today. And it's been a great show. Appreciate you. If we can't leave, then we must leave deuces, and I catch you Monday. And I know you're going to do a show Monday. Peace out. Oh, absolutely. Now, for those listening, if, if you're not already subscribed, you have to subscribe to the Roger Report Live. That would be Monday morning show. I'll still be doing some small commentary on the Roger Report throughout the week, but the, the, the live shows, 9 a.m. Central Time, that's on the Roger Report Live. 9 a.m. Central Time. Link is in the description. Uh, Rael, any closing statement you want to make? Because I do have to get out of here for a family event. Uh, great show, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, peace uh, to the panel. Peace to the chat. Y'all have a good weekend. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And there'll probably be a show tomorrow, y'all. More than likely, there's going to be a show tomorrow. Was Gino going to be the sponsor of the next show, whether it's on the Roger Report Live Monday or 
I'm gonna try to do a show about 5 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Okay, if I if I have to move it up a little bit or move make a little later, I'll definitely try to try try to uh, put a notice up in good enough time for people to see it. But I'm I'm shooting for 5 p.m. tomorrow to to get a show in. Okay, so just want to make y'all be aware of that. It's not 100% guaranteed yet because there's some money issues going on, and I do got to make money, y'all. I do got to make some money. So, but more than likely, I'm shooting for 5 p.m. tomorrow. But guys, I do want y'all to have an understanding. It is up to you to hold black women accountable. The 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 rest of society pretty much ain't gonna do it. You know, we got a few women who go to who go to prison over some stuff they done. But but like um, Dr. Tiasan Johnson has said many a time, you know, they don't even build the prisons to 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 imprison women. So if you think black women are gonna be held accountable in society by other people, you, you got a, you got something bad coming to you. We actually got to hold them accountable. We got to make them actually stick to their words so they can stop being comfortable lying to us all the time. You know, lying to me about what they want to eat is just ridiculous. That's why I use it as an example. It's, it's a very ridiculous thing to do, to lie to somebody about them not being hungry when you're about to go get some food. That, But that's how small it, it starts with. And as Black Rule has said, if, if you used to her telling you a bunch of nonsense, well, when she do other stuff, you won't even you won't even second guess it. You don't want to get used to being with a woman who you cannot trust. I, I've never advised black men to be with a woman that's untrustworthy. Don't do it. OK, just don't do it at the end of the day. You got to stand up for yourself as a man. OK, stop being afraid to be ruthless to women. OK. That is something black men got to get past. I understand you were, you know, some of us were raised in a home and the woman was always put first. The man is supposed to be first, period. Okay. The women don't have to like it. They ain't got to. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's the way God set it up. So if you believe in God, he set it for the men to be first. Who cares what somebody else thinks about it? Okay. If you're a person that believes in God. Now, if you're an atheist, I don't know what to tell you. But if you believe in God, he said, Men are not supposed to be first. Accept your role as a man and just be first. And don't worry about how people are going to feel about it. But you literally got to start holding them accountable. You got to make sure that when a woman says something to you, you make her do what she says. Or you got to give her the dough to get up out of there. That relationship is going to have to come to an end. It's got to be one of the two. We can't really physically do a bunch of stuff to women. Not in this country anyway. But you can hold her accountable by getting rid of her. You can make her do what she actually says. And, and, and at least if she ain't going to do the stuff that she claims she's going to do, she can at least stop saying it so you won't even have an expectation of it. You know what I'm saying? So you got to pick your poison as a man. It will be rough because they're not used to people holding them accountable. I promise you that. That I can guarantee you. So whoever you meet and you start holding them accountable, more than likely it's going to be rough at the beginning because she's going to have a reaction. My thing is the reaction should not should not have anything to do with her doing what she was told to do or her doing something that she said she was going to do. Nobody made her agree to it. Nobody made her say it. She can do it. Point blank, period. But I got to get up out of here, y'all, only because I got to go to a family event or, or it would have been a little long because I like to, to, to go to the three hours. But I got to go. I got to go. Uh, Sugar Bomb says sharing. I guess you're sharing the stream. That's actually a great thing. And I appreciate it if that's what you are doing. And if that's not what you're doing, then start doing it. Okay, y'all? And make sure y'all hit that like button on the way out. Y'all y'all have been a little cheap with the like button sometimes. <laughs> hit that like button, y'all. It's free, and it does help the channel grow. So make sure y'all hit that like button. If you're not subscribed to the Roger Report Live, hit the link in the description. The, the link is in the description. And I will see y'all next time around. Long live the habitual line steppers. I'm Roger. I'm right. And I'm out.